This episode of the Procrastinators Podcast was brought to you by our bonus episode. Go to patreon.com slash the procrastinators and pledge $5 or more to get access to all our bonus monthly episodes. Last month's episode was insomnia. This is the kind of stuff you deal with when you're in the Procrastinators Podcast, most thug podcast in the fucking <laughs> 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 Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me missing a night of sleep is like it's like my Auschwitz. It's like my Holocaust. <laughs> That's your advice for us, mage. I I said it's not an advice. I'm gonna punch you. Yo, nigga, this is like the Russian sleep experiment, only with less fucking weed and more <laughs> fucking weed. Am I right, bro? <laughs> yeah, like they're the uh, that's incredible. That's in unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> what is happening here? That's patreoncom slash procrastinators making you fall asleep every single time. Are we doing a cluster punk runway show? That's yeah, nice. dude, that's top of the list. Think, hasn't that <laughs> been on the docket priority. for a while? What docket? I haven't seen this shit. Did you? What there, have there you is seen? A- I've Did seen nothing. Seen I don't know anything about Radcon other than that I'm gonna spend a whole lot of money and go to Boston for 10 days and uh, record a bunch of shit with you guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. Episode 99 of the Procrastinators Podcast. Oh my I god. It's almost I am 100. the best guy ever. It's, we're, we're, we're getting there. Uh, with us is Digibro. I'm a Digibro. You've got Tom Oliver. I am nice one, dude. I am not Digi Bro at all. I'm a what's the opposite of digital? Analog, Tactile, analog. physical. Analog. Uh, analog I'm an analog bro. Is a, is analog analog when is the bro. when's the lore of analog bro gonna break? In? Uh, or, 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 oh no, wait. The, look, look sure forward to bro, look, 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 bro, look forward. Bro. Look forward to the awesome uh, origin story of analog bro at Radcon Three. Coming right. at you That's next right. week. All right, right off the bat, making false promises that we can't we can't keep. Right off the bat, let, let, let's <laughs> everything's keep this a lie. Going. Don't believe any of it. There's um, an, every here. time anyone mentions anything concerning Radcon Three, there's always a little asterisk at the end that. Uh, uh, yeah. Do makes you it sound like no, Munchy right. Hat? Mun- munchy Hat, my my favorite hat producing content creator of the entire world, known exclusively for, for his hat making skills. I don't think so. Pretty Tommy good. Oliver, known for. Uh, being black for and affinity white. user yeah, yeah, for whoa affinity whoa user. whoa that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, well, that's for, now, a, that's for a future episode all right it's you know. <laughs> true uh we've got hypocrite uh, uh get ready get get ready <laughs> get ready <laughs> yes. i am ready. everybody what do do get now? ready uh, get ready for ben the podcast oh, okay shut up yeah and then the ben party. taint is here <laughs> There he is. <laughs> ah, the crisp, refreshing taste of Diet Mountain Dew Code Red. Ah, uh, yes. My, my so fellow Long adjectives. Sip tribe member. Okay, and what are we talking about today, everybody? Let's just get to the fucking topic. Uh, today is the day that we revisit a topic that we had previously attempted. The only failed PCP episode up to this point. The legendary, much-awaited, weird well, utilitarianism. That's this, what? <laughs> what? The, 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 whether there have been failures is debatable. <laughs> well, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Any technical sure, okay. failures? This was technical ruined by, by Nate's work, if I remember correctly. Every, well, it's true. My computer had died in the middle of like our 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 episode. We were like forty five minutes into it, so we had wanted to like put the capper, put the stopper on all discussions of of this weird utilitarianism meme, and make it so that there was just a one stop shop for all your yeah. W. We wanted needs. we wanted to end it once and for but, all. But, Indeed, but, 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 but I wanted to slay that dragon. Fucking fizzled out and died, much like Nate's hopes and dreams and his computer, and we had to restart <laughs> here today for he's, you. He's not wrong. He's I not wrong. argue what, what better... I said in the original episode. I, I think I'm going to come Meteor. down like on your side, Nate, but also make fun okay. Of you. Okay. Okay. What, what better way to 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 start Radcon than to fucking end weird to utilitarianism fight. forever, <laughs> never to have it well, rise again? Thing. I just want to I just want to reiterate for everybody. Yes, indeed. Radcon is next week from when you're hearing this. This is episode 99. PC uh, the, there will be the PCP episode 100 spectacular you, at Radcon. You guys Who knows? Have been fucking we, asking about Nate's fucking weird utilitarianism since day fucking 1 and here we go. We're finally going to be able to put that that ghost to rest and suck him up in our fucking Put that ghost vacuum. right back in its shell, everybody. Yeah. Here we go. I, I, here we I go. think the, the best way to start is mm-hmm. um to to talk uh, to 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 uh, reference uh, Nate mm-hmm. yourself, you are the Urban Dictionary this time. So what <laughs> is weird utilitarianism? 
Excellent question. What it, does it mean to you? It's a it's a complicated thing. Uh, but you know, okay, as a good starting point. Does anybody point, know where start... the term came from? Was it from the comments? I think it was someone yeah, in the people, comments. People yeah. were saying yeah. it in the comments. I was actually trying Somehow, to remember who specifically had said well, it, it, but just I couldn't. A, like that that exact phrase like came up multiple times. I don't know if yeah, like, it was yeah. inspired by one person, but like multiple people would refer to Nate specifically as weird utilitarianism as like your. It's thing. true. It's true. Um, and it, it became a little bit of a meme, and now. Obviously, it's it's grown a little bit. So let's start with the weird with the word utilitarianism. So here's your Urban Dictionary defines it uh, as such: uh, a philosophy that people should act in order to increase the frequency and longevity of pleasure throughout the world. Although the idea acting to increase long term and global pleasure sounds desirable, utilitarians believe that the pleasure of many outweighs pleasure of a few. A utilitarian may believe that killing one person or to increase the pleasure of many or killing someone and harvesting their organs would be a just action. Some utilitarians have seen that this can be dangerous. Many utilitarians, because of this, follow a slightly different ideology. They should act to increase the frequency and longevity of pleasure throughout the world by following the best social standards. Okay. Okay, Nate. And the little, well, it sounds like utilitarianism is already weird, but what's weird about your <laughs> utilitarianism? Yeah. Well, uh, what's weird about mine, I guess in contrast to this, and we'll, we'll, we'll flesh it out throughout this entire podcast, but it's, like, that is a, the definition here, even in here, it is confused on Urban Dictionary. It's like bringing multiple interpretations at you. So the, I am 100%. The weirdest thing about that definition is the fact that they, yeah. they, it, started off with like it's all about bringing the maximum amount of happiness to the maximum amount of people and i'm like that's what every mm-hmm. philosophy is about that's not unique True. to utilitarianism well, well, what they, what they like fail the to define here is that utilitarians tenet. think it purely in mechanical terms and in you know like only like there's no there's no soul to be conscious of or you know thoughts of the afterlife it is purely a materialistic view which is which is not synonymous with it's, immoral it's what a christians robot. it's all about the utility calculus is, is every utilitarianism is that, co- correct he he had the soul of a champion um well okay what's what i i personally the reason why i like the term weird utilitarianism so much is because i am 100 percent against identitarianism in every form i think it what's is ab- uh, identitarianism Explain. just just the idea of grouping any people together under a label to quantify them i find slightly uh, I find it definitely uh, harmful and mostly immoral. I hate because... labels so much. I'm so glad people have made this label for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But, but but that's the thing. Because the weird utilitarianism label is a label of one. Me. Just me. Which is exactly how we should think of people. As individuals. And that's it. Like the word, if I tell someone I'm a Democrat... Uh, which I'm not. Then, which, like, which they are. will immediately pour all these assumptions onto me. Yeah. If they but say if you, that they're a weird Democrat, <laughs> <laughs> well, then, then you got, then you got something special going on. That's actually fair, so, though. Like, I, I would say um, mm-hmm. the same thing about me. Like, if you, if you attach the word weird in front of it, yeah, it, it helps to diminish some of those. It's like, yeah, he's mm-hmm. kind of like, it's kind of like if you called yourself like a weird feminist. Like, nobody wants to be sure. called or. You, I shouldn't say nobody wants to be called a feminist I'm a weird anymore, menace, but a lot of sure. people don't want to be called a feminist because of the fact that they're like, oh, it has too mm-hmm. many connotations. But if you're just a weird right. feminist, it's like people get that you're on board for women, but they're not sure why or like what mm-hmm. what things you're <laughs> What are into. his true motives? Exactly. There's a lot yeah. of people that would look at feminists now and be like, those are pretty fucking weird people. Yeah, but so. if you're yeah, that's weird, exactly even that's that's exactly them, you've got to you know. confuse them so that they're not But I don't, I don't want to have to meet a girl and have her say she's a feminist and and then I just start to project all my bullshit baggage onto her. I don't want to do that. Right. And of course, it's I don't want people to do that worst. to me either. There, there yeah, could be some bad. like old fucking like like mom from the seventies who doesn't even like know what a computer is, but still calls herself mm-hmm. a feminist because that's what she was when she was a little exactly. babe. Right. I uh, the the biggest problem I see in today's like online discussions. And it's probably been the problem forever, and it's just become clear to me as I, you know, get a little more mature and, and worldly. The problem across the board is is twofold. People, one, they talk past each other, and they don't understand what the other, excuse me, is actually saying. They're not actually paying attention to what the other person is saying. They are making assumptions and projecting things onto them from their predetermined biases about what these people think. That is problem one. Problem two is that people do not actually 
like comprehend that people believe what they say. They don't actually understand the difference in fun foundational worldview that people have. Like you can be uh, like an atheist, and if you you can go around and be like, oh, you know, uh, Catholics are so evil. You know, always preaching about hell. You know, it's so immoral. And then I say that because I on a, on a base level I do think it is immoral, but. Like, if you think about it from the perspective of the Catholic, if they don't force their children through whatever means are necessary to be a good, virtuous Christian, that is dooming their child to an eternity in hell. That is so much more significant than any amount of discomfort they will suffer in life that it would be super immoral of them to not do whatever was necessary mm -hmm. to protect their kid from this perceived danger. The, the problem with and, people... In, oh, yeah. well, sorry, continue. No, no, go go ahead, go ahead. The, the problem with people on, like, fighting, just in general, but also on the internet, especially because you can see it far more, you know, pe people's mm -hmm. conversation are laid out bare here. So people respond to the invisible words people may be implying by just being part of the hate effigy that, that they mm -hmm. are assigned to. So if you just see, not even, like, in the text, but if you just see, like, some sort of, like, avatar or, like, name that could, in fact, oh, yeah. signify that they are a part of some group vaguely, then you are just going to bring up your hate effigy that, that you have of that group Dude, and just resort to I for one, I for and, one and just am sick and tired that of, idea. <laughs> I am sick and tired of people seeing my brony icon and just <laughs> getting all this shit on me. Just making all these blanket assumptions about me. I gotta, it's not cool. I gotta mm. tell you, if you want people to take anything you say seriously ever, don't, mm -hmm. like, make your whole aesthetic memes. Because if your whole aesthetic yes. is memes, people, like, that is... Often the case, like let's say you go to Drill's Twitter. Like Drill's Twitter is yeah. a big meme. That's the joke. It's a it's a mm -hmm. joke Twitter. You know his pictures are all goofy. His name is stupid, but it's great. Um, sometimes you see people and their name is like Cunt Lord, and they've got a picture mm -hmm. of like a gaping ass as their as their avatar, <laughs> and they're leaving comments like <laughs> like this video uh, was okay, but I think if you improved your sound quality or whatever, I'm like, <laughs> am I taking advice from Cunt Lord with the gaping yeah. ass like? <laughs> the, the gaping ass is a sidekick. Cunt Consider Lord your the, brand. The <laughs> your brand affects the way that people perceive the things you say. And it's even if true. you're a nobody Definitely. on Twitter, like people still are gonna. It's amazing how often I get like responses that I don't understand on Twitter because it's like some random guy who I don't know anything about, and his profile is just so uncomprehensible that I can't mm -hmm. even understand the tweet itself, even if it's written yeah. kind of plainly. Like I don't know what perspective they're coming from and it's hard to get that in 140 characters and with like the minimal information that's on somebody's 280 Twitter page. characters 280, 280 oh, boy though my phone still is 140 it's annoying it's very annoying it's strange it, it, anyway it, right right off the bat here we're just we're just describing for for the viewers just that tri tribalism is, is you know everyone's packed into a label yeah, so, and so doesn't does like anybody that. disagree like with that topic. that tribalism is bad because uh, probably I, not i think I we're like all on the same tribes. page they they're cool. I, well, <laughs> well okay. they're funny <laughs> i want to i i don't think that tribalism is bad I do think labels are bad. I think it's fine to be I a think part the of tribadism is pretty cool. I, I think it's fine to be a part no, of like whatever. No, nobody. Group. I can't what, understand what is that, you, man. Ben? I'm trying to talk and you fucking talk it over. Me, so that's <laughs> yeah, why I was okay, reacting right. to your goddamn joke. Uh, what was he? What are you saying? What is your thing? <laughs> what are you asking? Tribadism. What's a tribad? It's um shit. It's some kind of lesbian thing. <laughs> Thank oh. you, Ben. I think it's scissoring. I think it's scissoring. I, what, what, uh, oh, tribadism. Okay. Ignore me. I pronounce it tribadism, not tribadism. Okay. Well. I guess you'd be the expert. Yeah, well, wait, wait, wait. I looked it up. Uh, a tribad, according to Urban Dictionary, is a female with a greatly enlarged clitoris. Oh, thought to be of a result fuck? of hormone imbalance, especially one of homosexual orientation. Ben, what cartoons well, looks have like you I been was watching? Like. <laughs> Steve from Universe. Well, in, in any case, I'm okay with mm -hmm. the idea of like people sticking with their groups. You know, I mean, we are a tribe. That's pretty clear. The are you telling me you're a white yeah. nationalist, did you? Yeah. Is that what, like, yeah. I, mm -hmm. Invisible okay. words. Absolutely. I don't think anybody questions. <laughs> <laughs> that the PCP is like a tight knit group that's kind of insular, but we mm -hmm. we do try to um, avoid having labels on this group. Like, there's a lot of podcasts yeah. that you can like point at and say that's a libertarian podcast, or like mm -hmm. that's a liberal podcast, or this is a comedy podcast, or this is that. PCP is like it is tribal in that it's the PCP, but there's no other simple way to describe I it. 
I know? love. Yeah, we're just ourselves. One of my favorite things is is insisting that I am a red pill and a blue pill at all times. Yeah, just it, just <laughs> both ends of the spectrum. And see, all know you're just yeah, a black just, pill, pure and simple. Yeah. That's fair, but that's just yeah, that's you just rejecting. Nobody likes to be labeled. Being labeled is not fun. People should some be people judged really on their like, ideas. No, some people are all some about it. Some people derive though. a lot of their. Oh, okay, well, you know what? That's really the thing. Labeling yourself is a fickle enterprise that far too many people identify with. You got your guys like Richard Spencer who just say like, "I'm white. I care." about white people i don't care about like whatever i just want like a future for the white race and like i get why he thinks that way the tribal nature of humanity and stuff but i think it is a very huge mistake to just say that your race like should define the group that you that you hang with and like you got you got groups like um I don't know, like feminists or whatever. And they people just push their particular agenda and increase the amount of, like, fragmentation by having, like, purity tests over and over. Like, oh uh, if you've got, like, it, how feminist is feminist enough <laughs> to be a member of a Nate, community? Well, or, think, or how white is white enough to with, be in Richard with collectivism country? in general is that, uh, yeah. and we're seeing it happen now, is that whenever you have, like, a collective ideology, it kind of, like, turns on itself because there's, there's more, like you said, there's more purity tests that happen. In, yeah over and over again and it seems like the inevitable end game of collectivism is just individualism because like eventually you're going to keep breaking you get down smaller, groups, smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller, and smaller until it's exactly. just me versus you so it's like why waste like a fucking century of like infighting and like social unrest when we already came to the answer that's exactly right I, that's exactly right hey I, we're not really talking about weird utilitarianism well, and, and we're going to continue not because i generally. want to comment on something did you said yeah and i have to go <laughs> up, man, uh, as soon as everybody else is done Oh, yeah, it's fine. Digi, I, I, I think that it is misguided to say that it is good that the PCP is so insular. Because Agreed. I don't think that it is. I, I think that we should be branching out more as we are with guests. Oh, I, I, I didn't mean to say idea. it's... I don't mean to say it's good for us to like never talk to anybody and uh, and and all stuff like that. I just mean it's nice to have a tribe. Like it's good to have people who generally see things the same way you do and that you can relate to and bounce it, ideas off of and like get it, a better it, understanding of yourself. Like it, I don't think anybody in the PCP would have been as successful if not for having a bunch of like-minded individuals well, they could sure. b- bounce their ideas off of. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, I, I just um, think I, it's it's usually advantageous to just not be in, in one particular group i you know on on that why subject, limit yourself to just one box yeah yeah that, that's a very you be a, that's uh, right zero astria and just pick any one you want dude. <laughs> I, yeah. when like i think it is important to note that humans definitely are tribal we definitely are that way just biologically speaking and psychologically speaking and I think we, should we definitely like are like more it. comfortable with things that we've like grown up with and then when you go to to foreign cultures like it feels foreign you know you can't just instantly absorb the culture of like a new place I, immediately i actually uh That's, what munchie was saying mm-hmm. about like don't limit yourself to one box pick as many different labels as you want i <laughs> I, I like that yeah well you were joking about it at least i think it's a good idea to i think it's funny everybody like has oh i have this one religion and this one like philosophy mm-hmm. like oh i'm a uh, i'm a fucking like you said atheist or zoroastrianist yeah. or whatever like pick two pick three I, I, some of them are mutually exclusive. <laughs> some yeah, of them are, the but not all of them. Like, I would consider myself uh, a Taoist because nothing mm-hmm. about it contradicts my own philosophy, you know? So, like, why not throw it on the pile? There you go. You know, because be that, uh, that just be everything. cheapens the idea of labels, which we already they should like already, already be cheapened because they're labels not worth should be anything. super cheap. Taoism, <laughs> based off of Tao, the greatest Davu commenter of all time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shout out to Tao. Um, I want to go on a okay. A, well, let's, a small let's talk tear. more about. I want to uh, go on a rant here because this is a perfect okay. opportunity for it. Um, since you're all here, and sure. this is all your fault. Which is hmm. that I, as a, as, this is super relevant. I, as a member of being in the PCP, have been judged to have opinions I don't have based on mm. other members of the PCP. Same. You this has same. happened where the the biggest way this happened to me is recently there was there's a board called Trans that exists on Reddit. <laughs> it's spelled uh-huh. like that, like a ton of letters, um, mm. and it's for like trans people making fun of themselves, essentially, like you know. Um, self-effacing humor about sure. about trans issues. Well, they had a thread called um, like a gender fluid egg 
something like finding a gender the rare gender fluid egg is what it was called mm. and it was just a bunch of quotes of me from uh from my Crunchyroll interview talking about how I wanted to be Ranma and be able to switch between male and female freely okay. and people in the thread like a bunch of people were saying like oh I always thought Digi was like that cuz like I watched the videos that he talks about wanting to be a girl all the time you know mm-hmm. and I was like this thread was a huge revelation for me because I never thought about it, and I'm reading it, and I'm like, oh, my God, these people are right. Like, I've been ignoring this this whole time. But then somebody comes in the thread and is like, <laughs> Digi can't be uh, – or Digi's probably not gender fluid because he's um, part of a transphobic group called the PCP. Mm. Who, oh, of um, course. Yeah. Who all hate trans people and mm-hmm. want is that what them, people say about us now? Want them to have no rights <laughs> and they're red pill. And also you were considered uh, – um, this was considered a a what's the word I'm looking for the the hate group no the red the red one not the blue one but red, not red Republican Hill? the oh, oh yeah conservative conservatives yeah uh, this was yeah, described yeah. as a conservative transphobic podcast and I was wow. just like mm-hmm. I don't like even <laughs> if right, even if there was at least <laughs> like this was all based on like a discussion of of course um, Nate and Ben and Devu mm. I think being, like, uh, aggressively misunderstanding trans issues or something in some podcast. But it got attributed to me, and Allegedly. I was just like, I've been the most pro-trans person on the f- that I know for as long as I've known that it was a thing, you know? Like, I've mm-hmm. always been totally down for uh, for trans rights and everything. So it was very strange for me to see that, and I was just like, the PCP is not a conservative podcast or a transphobic podcast. If it was... Yep. Then I wouldn't be on it, you know, like that would that, mm-hmm. because for it to for the entire podcast to be that would mean that everyone on there was that, you know. But it's not; it's a multifaceted podcast with a bunch of different personalities well, see, with different that's world the problem. Views who feel People, as though they can actually talk to each other in spite of the differences in their worldview, you know. That that's right. It, it's unfortunate, but this is people. You know, like, I understand why people make this connection. Well, first of all, to make the case that, for example, what I said on the podcast was transphobic, I said something... Actually, what I said in this podcast was equally damning in terms of me being a hater against trans rights. Because what I said previously in this very podcast was, I am staunchly anti-identitarian. And that is exactly synonymous with saying what I said in that podcast was that I don't care about trans people because that's what I mean. I don't care about these individual issues that have literally nothing to do with my life. It, it, and I don't care about Republican rights. I don't care about uh, anyone's rights. rights. I, I, I don't care about issue. black people. I don't care about white people. I don't care about any of this shit. I just care about individual rights as a person to person. I think every trans person should be 100% free to do whatever they want. That's, I completely think you should do that. But, like, you know, I've got a lot of shit to do. I don't have a lot of time to worry about yeah. everyone's problems. That's how I feel. Fight your own That's battles. That's how I feel. I definitely believe in that. Everybody you, you feel – off... say that again? Oh, fight your own battles. Like, everybody's always trying yes. to fight for somebody else. They're always trying to be like – every time I get a complaint that I mm-hmm. said nigga from a non-black mm-hmm. person, I'm just like, you're why, – why do you care? You know, like – Yeah. And even if it is a black person, I'm like, why do you care either? But, like – um, it's just very strange to me when I see people fighting, like, trying to fight for other people. It's like, fight for your own shit. I know you got problems. You know, I know you got your own this shit you is, gotta deal with. I don't know, white guilt or something. People want to be allies I, and something. I, I don't I, know what I, I the idea is there. That, that, I'm sure I'm sure that's part of it, Nate. I'm sure that's, that's a growing culture. But I think yeah. a lot of it is just, like, people trying to be goody two-shoes. Though, I, 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 I phrase signal. that in, like, a mean way. But I, I'm sure in their heart of hearts, they want to be a gay person. They're see, I, I completely agree. Yeah. I completely agree that these people are actually being good and being honest with their worldview. I don't even begrudge them that. Mm-hmm. I simply have a different worldview, and I think that it is not helpful to just, like, call me evil or hateful or, like, you know, any of that shit, as opposed to convincing me. Like, Pedantic Romantic is trans and messaged me and, like, politely explained some areas where I made basically just complete mistakes. And I just politely said, oh, well, thanks. I wasn't aware of that. You know, I, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about these issues, as should be clear. So, yeah, I was definitely wrong about that. Thanks for correcting me. We had a completely civil discussion. I respected her points, and it was fine. And and that's, like, that's a civil discourse that actually gets somewhere. Um, yeah, that's it. But then, when like, but the reason we're all grouped together, this is the other problem here. It's that people can think whatever they want about, like, me and what I've said, 
but because I am, like, officially, I have the label, I do have a label of member of the PCP, and Digi, you also have the label of member of the PCP, yeah. and people can just latch on to that, and they can make any connections they want. They could say that, it, first of all, they, they wrongly perceive me to be, to hate trans people. They could say, uh, he's in the PCP, therefore the whole PCP is tainted with this idea, therefore Digi is also tainted I mean, with this idea, or he's, like, encouraging this a, it. This is a huge part of why we've yeah. essentially lost Jesse, and why all mm. of you are responsible, who listen to this show, for associating <laughs> him with with everything we say, when That's he does true. not want to be associated with a lot of what we say, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, like, as a, like, again, like you said, you get a target on your back just for being, like, friends with somebody who, uh you know, who people don't like. And it's one thing if it's, like, a criminal, I'd be like, yeah, um, you shouldn't be... Like, if if someone's doing something Mm -hmm. really bad, um, even if they're just being an asshole, like, yeah, you should probably not openly associate with them. But, like, this is a podcast. It's a discussion. I'm not holding you guys responsible for the things you say on the PCP because it's, first of all, a comedy show. It's not a fucking... There's... We're not, like, trying to decide laws... We're not like this is a, oh god this is a whole other rant that like people these mm-hmm. days are constantly holding like YouTubers to task to be right about everything. It's like this yeah. podcast yeah. is not about being correct about anything. It's a fucking <laughs> comedy podcast. A bunch of like guys in their late twenties get a, hey. sit around well and and, and munchy, munchy. <laughs> um you know sit and around and just munchy. Spitball, whatever. <laughs> thoughts they happen to have about some topic because we're pals and if you like listening to it that's fine but like every time people are like coming down on us super hard because like something we said was a little edgy or like offended someone i'm just like dude it's a podcast you know like don't worry about it it's it's not gonna hurt anybody i mean it's it's one of those things and also none of us were like transphobic in like a really bigoted like stupid way right like we were all just curious and like talking about it like if no one one's donating was, to but that's a the thing to, to not be an ally show, you know? the, the, the problem is to these people these are like life or death questions in their mind so to not be an ally fighting on their side is to be at the very least like facilitating harm and that is like if it's you have like that just, kind of mindset you need to fuck off I, I mean anybody, yeah I would I would, I would agree with that, that like anyone who doesn't agree with me totally or isn't like fighting you know for my yeah. battles and my rights it's like dude I got my own shit to worry about so you can fuck off. You know? I mean, that's how I feel. The, the, I'm completely libertarian on this front. I encourage anyone to do whatever they want on all these fronts. But to say that, like, we have to be fighting the same battles as you, like, I, 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 fuck I mean, off. It's uh, you can't tell me what to do. Fuck off. Else, that your particular worldview trumps everything else and has to be respected above all others. The, the, like, the, the problem. If anyone's being hurt, if there's people being murdered or, you know, any of this shit is happening, uh, let me know so that the police... Well, don't let me know because I don't care. But the police care. The police fucking care. You know, I, there was probably a couple murders in Africa, probably a couple murders in Russia today. Guess what? I don't care. I don't know those people. I'm sorry. The police of Russia have to deal with those murders. Uh, it's out of my jurisdiction. It is outside my fucking jurisdiction. The, That's how I feel. The problem with the PCP and everyone taking all of our opinions. I have cool. real trans friends, by the way. I have real trans friends who I talk to oh, and like, sure and we are do. friends. But here's the thing: I like them because they're my friends, not because they're trans. Yeah. That's that's the thing, guys. That's what I want everyone to fucking understand. <laughs> I have trans Yo, friends weird, who are really weird, trans. we have not talked about weird utilitarianism. No, ben, at I was going to say right. something else other than weird utilitarianism right now as well. Okay, go for it. We'll okay. get to it. Well, we'll get to it. <laughs> we're, we're, this is going to be side tangents forever, and we're at the very end, we're going to yeah. be like, what was what were we talking about at the beginning of this podcast? Uh, anyway, the problem with the PCP and everyone, like, like taking all of our opinions as a whole is, like, everyone's mm. taken, like, 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 print out each of our, uh, uh, like, icons, put them in a bowl, put them in a microwave, and you've made an opinion soup. Not yeah. only do all of our opinions, like, kind of get mushed into one, they're warped opinion just due to the nature of, like, the way the internet works that everyone yeah. will mm-hmm. warp your opinion mm-hmm. no matter what to be a, a cartoonish evil hate effigy version of what it originally was so well you know like that happen. it's a double like like you 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 will have like like like, like if you Vin's close comments on your videos will be attributed to hippo or something like that like it yeah. won't even be, yeah. it won't even be your warped opinion it'll be someone else's yeah and and people like it's like when you uh, close comments on a video and suddenly you mm-hmm. are n- you deny all criticism like that's the kind of yeah. like logical that's how the internet works. It's like you turned off comments on one video and now you cannot take criticism 
at all. That's how people now take you. You know, well, it's, like, it's funny you mentioned that because like a thing is like you know there are lo- there were a lot of people back when we did commenter rules part two that they everything mm-hmm. oh the entire PCP is anti comments when like half of that episode was like a debate about whether they yeah, were good or bad. Like, people people recently who have been like criticizing you, Digi, for your whatever stance on comments or whatever, like. The, they they they'll take clips of you saying these things from like a PCP episode, ju- and like you can hear me cutting in, making a counter argument, and uh-huh. like arguing against that point. And then they say, "Oh, the PCP believes this," right. and yeah. like <laughs> we just have clearly different opinions. Well, I'm trying to say mine, but then they the just thing. say the like, PCP I think, thinks I think this. this is like. I don't really blame people for doing this. It's like intellectual shorthand, and I feel like that's kind of like our brains yeah. are designed to do that because it like frees up resources mm-hmm. to do other things. You know, when you, you gotta catch back back in the day, when you're trying to make sure you don't get fucking mauled by a saber tooth tiger, you don't really have yeah. time to fucking you know noodle on the nuances of everything going on around you. You kind of we, we're, our brains are good at like picking out patterns really quickly. And and I mm-hmm. think that's what mm-hmm. happens in you situations know, like this. It's like Tom, easy to right. just like make a flat association and roll with it as Tom, opposed to like sitting there I and mumbling I completely agree over. that like it's totally reasonable that this happens in people's heads but I think mm-hmm. as soon as they open their mouth that's when you need to start thinking about it you know that's right like we like, cannot judge people's thoughts but we can 100% judge their actions and yeah. we should oh and I'm like, not if, I'm not excusing people I'm just saying yeah. I understand why it happens I don't I think 90% of, of the time it's not maliciously done I think people are just not thinking it through when you're tasked with being a trans police officer and on your you on your morning commute to work every day, you have to scan every podcast to see which one is transphobic, and you only have five minutes to do so in between eating crunch bars, and of course you're going to make some mistakes and misfile some here and there. I, we understand. We, we, we get it, guys. By the way, I, I like whatever, it. I just want to clarify, guys, it's not like I actually, I, I've said this before, but I, I don't like not care about trans people. It's that your issues are your own. They're not my issues. That's how I feel. I, but, I think okay, the, whatever. The, the, it's like people can't comprehend the idea of a group that isn't the same on ev- like mm-hmm. we're a group of friends most groups of friends don't go under like an, a group that mm-hmm. is like a brand as well well it's not and as though so we well, sit around we having meetings so many... deciding what opinions we're gonna have as the PCP you know mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, like I feel I like some people is... imagine that we all there... sit in the chat going like oh hey everybody fuck commenters right and then everyone's like yeah yeah and then we all like rally together and we say a chant <laughs> like fuck yeah. comments fuck <laughs> comments because that's yeah, what's presented yeah. on the show is like this weird frat boy fun atmosphere but well, like, you know that is the, interesting? that's the podcast you know that's the yeah we're all total chads and everyone knows you know what was a fascinating video recently um uh, uh, Uncle Adams and Anthony Fantando were having a bit of a tiff recently, and he they got together finally, and they kind of just uh, they had a they had a podcast together. And what was fascinating about that was Anthony Fantano is like he's a big meme guy, but on this podcast with Uncle Adams, he opens up and really says like, yeah, you know, like I present myself as a big memer. Um, I but I still get like a lot of like really vicious terrible comments. I mean, of course, the mountain's got like yeah. 1.3 million subs and shit. So he gets like vicious terrible things and he's aware of how terrible his comments are. Yeah. Um and like it's and he talked about fault. that for a while. And, but uh, he, and, but his to some degree it's his fault, but like what he says is that like there's nothing I can do about it cuz these people they they will just they're here to do this stuff and Uncle Adams was making all these points about like how toxic his fans were like, you know, when Fantano shit on him, he got all this hatred and stuff. And Fantano was just like, "Yeah, man, uh, you know, that it's, it's an unfortunate reality." But what was interesting was how mature Uncle Adams really was about this. He was just like, "Look, people can shit on me all they want, but like I'm getting death threats calls to my house and like my family was getting this kind of shit and and Fantana was uh, just going along with him like this perceived guy who appears to be like a bastion of how much he you know like doesn't give a fuck and uh, just memes everything he actually he like he deliberately goes out of his way to like not address it because that's what they want in a situation like that you know uh, going off on a tangent here but I just thought it was interesting and, and relevant to this comment discussion even the most meme guys out there or, or among the most they are aware that comments can be terrible, and that they generally are, but they allow them to exist because no good comes from, like, closing them. Like, you gotta just let people do what they want, and that's just, well, that's just how it is. Well, honestly, we all agree with that, that no good comes from it. <laughs> I well, think I, 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 it's not that no good comes from it, but, you, you know, there's a lot of bad that comes with it. Yeah. I think, but whatever. Uh, I think in the in the case of Fantano though he has part of why his comments are so bad is that he yeah. for the longest time in his videos was like uh you know uh, mm-hmm. leave a comment if you have something negative to say to me 
And it's like, well, you're encouraging yeah. people to leave negative comments at that point. And that's true. And that's like, true. and encouraging the memes to perpetuate themselves. And like, every c- video he makes is all the comments are just memes now. And it's the same memes, yes, the same are. stale memes. And it's um, like, a pretty good meme video, Fantano. But did you have to praise Hitler 50 times? Exactly. You know, you see that. It's like, always every time. That. And there are ways to deal with that. You can just like, block some of those people or delete some of those comments or favorite mm-hmm. comments that are good like it's a huge huge thing that you can do hmm. for your channel is if you hit that heart button next to a comment that you think is thoughtful and good that'll make it show up at the top of the fucking comment thing and then everybody will see that like top comment is a thoughtful comment you know that's so, interesting yeah I like that I haven't thought of that people. see I, that's a positive I, uh, way to, to do really these like, sorts of things I really mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. how the weird utilitarianism a podcast was lost to time and here we are trying to revive it and 30 40 minutes in we still have not gotten around to even starting to talk about it yeah hey okay. nate what does weird okay. utilitarianism mean to you anyway? all right <laughs> Let, let's get back to, okay okay here's the thing guys here's here's the thing i think that was all good we're talking about ideologies here and and all this kind of stuff and like group think and stuff uh and weird utilitarianism uh as i've come to understand it is is the bastion uh rebelling against all things identitarian and 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 bad and gay and and fake and not real i don't think that's what people mean when they say weird utilitarianism yeah i've never thought of it that way <laughs> so, I, I think no, you're I'm, confused i'm, I'm lying i'm i'm, I'm <laughs> i think I'm what people i think when people it. say we your weird utilitarianism mean like uh-huh. they mean they mean like you're no like your your Trek. drive to your you know your belief in like you know mm. bettering humanity for the greater it's good the and like right. your, your weird and frankly insane belief that you you can do it through a YouTube. <laughs> well, when did I ever say that I could do it through a YouTube? I've, I'm I've said joking. that I can I'm contribute. Joking. Well, okay, okay. Um, well, okay. This is, I actually want to just revisit. I mean, it's been like 40 minutes now. But if we revisit the definition of utilitarianism, the thing that I didn't like about that definition was they talk about this thing of like, uh, I mean, the, the little like uh, uh, example here is people who believe in utilitarianism believe that it is all right to kill one person, take their organs and distribute them to many. Or like, you know, like a utilitarian would, with the trolley cart problem where you've got a train headed to one person or headed to five people and you have the power to flip a switch so it'll instead run over one person and, you know, you get a net gain of life. Um, these are the sorts of questions uh, that are that are dealt with by this. You know, and, I've never understood that rail yeah. car thing because it seems like obviously mm. you kill the one. Like who would choose well, otherwise? But well, then the you're responsible. The but then involved. you're responsible who, for killing yeah, the one. Okay, whereas well, otherwise they would have died through no for killing act of your four own. people then. Like that well, was, well, well, if you this comes to a, a this comes thing? to a, Can you be There was a moral quandary here about action. The, the idea yeah, like the responsibility for the death is the quandary here. Is it moral like to kill one person to save a billion? Like is that yes. moral? Well, yeah. that, that's the question. That's I, the question. I, I, I do, I do agree Even with I don't that it, necessarily agree. It just seems so, like, obvious to me. But that's just because it's obvious to me, and that's the way that I think. Okay, what if, this, you had to, was... what if you had to torture a person for a thousand years to save a billion people? What if you had to I do mean, that? I, well, I first of all, it's a huge a waste years. of my fucking time. Yeah, why am I living a thousand well, yeah, years? Yeah, I'd pay okay, someone else to do it, obviously. We're, we're, we're using examples here, goddammit. Right, are you saying I push a button and it causes somebody to suffer a thousand years to save a billion people? Is that what we're talking about? Um, Basically. Uh, Are all the people um, I love in in that group of a billion people? Yes, let's say yes. Okay, then I'm pressing the button. Okay, what if it's your dad you have to kill to save everyone? Ooh. Uh, Does the rest of the family die if I don't? Torture him for a thousand years. Yes. Uh, Okay. Let's say you have to kill. You have to kill your family to save a billion other people. No. No, I don't care okay. about anybody else outside my family. So okay, well, see, that's interesting. I, 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 I would do. do that. I Not do. because I dislike my family at all. I love my family. Which, which but, of but the there, PCP I'm... would I torture for a thousand years <laughs> to save a billion people? The... Uh, Digi, uh, Tom, Mage, Nate. Uh, and, okay, but, uh, but this, okay, there this we go. is the question. This is this is actual utilitarianism discussion. This is the good stuff. It's like making calculations, like trying to figure out how to maximize happiness. And health, and you know, like, and human life, and intelligence, and everything that comes with humans being alive. I just want to mention that uh, yeah. this this problem Vsauce did uh, as mm. part of his uh, special YouTube Red series, but one of the free ones. Oh yeah, um, uh, where he set up a situation with like the the train thing, mm. and it was like um, he actually fooled real people. And Ooh, what they one do? of one of them pulled the thing and killed the guy, but it's like the simulation ended, and then they interviewed her. And then yeah. everybody else was just uh, stunned and yeah. and froze and could not 
you know, even though they were like they they were told how to to press the thing, mm-hmm. and it was like, uh, you know, I'm just. It, it's a good video. I, I can't remember exactly. That sounds exactly fascinating. Memory. That sounds fascinating. Um, and that's exactly the sort of thing. Like when you're in the when you're in the hot seat, and it is you now. Like let's say, forget a button. What if you have to slow? Like the only mechanism is to physically cut the throat of the person. You have oh. to reach down with a knife and cut a person's oh, a throat story. to save. Uh, but see, that's the thing. I, I agree. It is a different story. How it affects you as a person is relevant here. But the yeah. bigger question is like. It's the amount of suffering that you're calculating here. Like, will this person suffer more than the the goodness that will be acquired through killing or through right. through saving like a hundred I mean, people? The, or whatever. Real, the real difficulty with utilitarianism and acting it out is because you have to yeah. put your own personal uh, mm-hmm. values and comforts aside. Like, you know, for That's a right. lot of people, right. like the discomfort of cutting someone's throat would override the the v- utilitarian value of saving you know a million you know, a billion people th- th- this is this is a great thing sam harris has an argument that has been made against him a thousand times by guys like like uh like glenn greenwald and stuff and, and it's this uh, like sam makes the case in one of his books i don't know which one uh for like ethical uses of torture and a lot of people a lot of christians for example will say like well, that's obviously ridiculous. No, there's no ethical case for torture. But think about it's it funny like Funny that this. the Christians would be the one bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, oh, good point. Of all uh, people. <laughs> but when you think about it, okay, let's say you've got a guy. You've got a, let's just say, um, Saudi Arabian terrorist. And they are, let's just say Iran, or, or what's the one? A Palestinian terrorist, because Palestine has nukes. Okay, and he's picturing part of a, Tom, go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you've got him here. You've got him locked up. And this man knows the location of a base where uh, his his current like Palestinian terrorists are preparing a nuke to launch against the United States to let's say Los Angeles where they and they the, the technology is such that they, you won't be able to stop it. This man has the information and he will not talk. Tell me the moral justification for not doing what's ever necessary to get that information out of him to save b- millions if not billions of people. Uh, slippery slope. <laughs> Sli- that that's true. That is very true. Slippery slope is real. Uh, Setting um, a precedent or something. I mean, if uh, what, you actually are, f- I think it makes a huge difference if you are like guaranteed know that he has that information mm-hmm. versus sure, suspect, sure. which is what I think is usually the case. Like that is a reasonable how do we point. Know until we torture them, if they know, you know. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. But, you know, when the question is, say, we're talking about saving millions of people, it is, is a reasonable thing to bring up. Like, how much are you willing to do? Let me, are you willing to, um, like, not give him a cup of coffee when he asks for one? Are we willing to, do, to torture him on that level? Um, yeah. I'd say people would probably say yes. Yeah. Are we willing to, I don't know, um, you know, give him an Indian burn? One Indian bird, exactly one. Will we go that far? Where is the line? Where will are, we do are literally picking nothing? Picking him to up? Him? Are we picking? Are, are comfortable with putting him down? If you know what I'm saying? <laughs> are, 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 are we fine with roughing him up a little bit around the edge? Or are, I think are, that are, comes are down, down to, to what to people are comfortable with themselves. You know, because like you're putting yourself in that situation. You well, know, like, the, the some thing, people would be more comfortable yeah, yeah. with going places than others. My 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 thing with utilitarianism is that like mm-hmm. from a raw intellectual perspective, I have a hard time arguing against it even in its most extreme cases just yeah. because like it's in when it comes down to math, like yeah, the math adds up. Mm-hmm. And yeah. mm-hmm. like like it's uncomfortable and unable to do it as I would be because I'm like a sensitive little bitch. Like at the <laughs> end of the day, like yeah, like if someone needed to fucking murder me to save like a million people, like I can understand the math and I have a hard time presenting a yeah. rational argument opposing it. I, I because... feel like a lot of us would be okay the... with somebody doing the horrible thing to save millions, but not us. Yeah, Tom, so that, that's Tom, the question. Yeah. I, I agree that like it's hard to argue against uh, that. Like you know, making more people happy is good. Like even in an extreme case, like intellectually, I want to say that yeah, probably you should kill that. You should kill that one one dude to save mm-hmm. that billion. But like the it's it's the putting it into action that is like well, but how do you know? Like sure, you can yeah. be like well, in theory, if torturing this one person will save a hundred people, yeah, utilitarianism would say that I should do it, and probably I should. Okay, but like hold on. you can't know for sure and, and- an out come like that right. and, well, and, except I mean, in you, theory you, when you're when know. you're talking about a math equation you're assuming that the va- all the variables in the equation okay, are but accounted like, for and just because we don't have literal mathematical absolutes doesn't mean that there couldn't be a case right, well, where you've the, got what, what if the one yeah. guy who could have got killed was uh future bill gates and was gonna save literally billions with his money 
or millions. Okay, what if and the what other if, four I, were what worthless? If, like we, I feel trash. like that's that's it's a, it's an interesting thought experiment, but there's no way to account for the future in the present. I I, I, I think right. even with like like the the fact that that this is even though it's like a, a thought experiment that I understand, even yeah. like that this is like a black and white cartoon situation. Like press this button, kill one person instantaneously, save a billion others like obviously right. this is not an everyday case and when you get down mm -hmm. to the minute details of like what would an actual utilitarian uh, philosophy entail in the yeah. real actual not thought experiment world it starts gets more muddy than just yeah well do i wanna, want to well, talk here's about this why because this is not think, really what weird utilitarianism is i think yeah, oh, that's it's, true it's, it's, well, let, me restore, let me just respond to his one point there much the reason why we have conversations like this is so that because because laws have to follow ethics. Like, right. first you have to have the philosophy in place, and then you build from that in practice. And you, then I, you apply that to the real world. And that's why we, we, we discuss things like this, so that we can, like, try in our heads, understand what is an appropriate thing to do in a certain situation, what isn't, so that then we can extrapolate think, from that no, and no, try I'm, to apply it. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that, like, yeah. like, like we're, we're all saying that, like, yeah, like, intellectually, we, we would all agree with that. And I, we, I'm sure we all would. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. I'm as a thought experience, I'm just saying that once you get into the more minute details of everyday life, it starts becoming mm -hmm. less just like instantaneously yeah. like, yeah, I cannot right. sure. argue against well, that. Well, the thing whatsoever. is like when you talk about utilitarianism in a crazy thought experiment like we're doing right now, it be, it's very easy to like understand lo logistically how it would work. But like mm -hmm. I don't think utilitarianism holds much value in everyday practice because well, it's very easy to make utilitarian wanna... arguments for everything. Yeah. And like the whole reason we have like it, like morality would break down at that point like i yeah. think i feel like morality is just kind of like a religion that we all kind of inherently apply to to keep like social structure in place without like any moral uh uh commonalities in people like everything would break down and utilitarianism really doesn't have any morality other than math and like you can fudge the numbers based on how you make the argument Right. No, no, you can't. I think that's totally bullshit. But this, did you I, think he, this is, I mean, I think there's wiggle room to determining what constitutes like creating more happiness versus taking it away. Right. We of need to get into the fact course. that this is not what weird utilitarianism is. This is he's, what utilitarianism is. Weird utilitarianism right. is where Nate eats nothing but beans all day. <laughs> <laughs> that is weird utilitarianism. <laughs> so. We were, I was talking oh. about this. I, I, I got to crack open a can. <laughs> I I love uh I love talking about all you guys because you're all such mm -hmm. you're all just like perfect like encapsulations of certain ideas, you know. Mm -hmm. And Nate is a per like Nate as a man who eats beans all the time is like a yeah. great yeah. example for conversation. Like oh yeah, like my mm -hmm. friend Nate. I mean that guy eats nothing but beans, so that's one way you can live. <laughs> like that's something I say to people, you know. That's one way you can live if you can call that living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where we get into the real. Because okay, I was I was making fun of you the other day, um, to my girlfriend, my my fiance, because great. of the oh, fact boy. that you. Um, I was like, you know, Nate is a is a big fitness boy, but uh -huh. like for the last few years, he's been like kind of. You know, you, uh, to, by your own admittance, oh, no! by your own no! admittance, you haven't really been at the gym like every day. You've you haven't like kept maintaining Stop! like being perfectly Stop! cut, <laughs> but you're still no! eating nothing but beans. Feel the burn. Like, Feel the burn. Even though Ugh. you're not like in like you're not like optimizing the like. The we have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> the facade has oh, been God. ruined. I didn't ask for this. Okay, all right, go on. I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> Throw it at me. Hit me. I want it. I want to I'm, feel the pain. I'm just Roast saying me. Make that me regret my decisions. I'm just saying that if you're going to eat beads <laughs> all the time, you need to have, like, all of the weird utilitarian yeah, lifestyle. Beans are good. Have you eaten a bean? They're good. I like <laughs> beans, all right? I'm not that into beans. But I've tried a lot of beans. Dark red kidney beans. That's the one. That's the one. I'm telling you. I mean, um, in, in fairness, I think it's I think it's fine uh, that you're doing yeah. like something at all times. Like you, yes. you obviously have a good figure. Like even if you're not like as cut it's as you right. want to be or in the gym all the time, you look mm -hmm. good. And mm -hmm. obviously, if eating beans all the time is contributing to that, then that's fine. Like it's just for me right. when I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be on a workout and diet routine. It's like it has to be everything. It has to be like the whole lifestyle because otherwise, it's like I can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If if I'm not uh, like really going ham into the bean life, then like just <laughs> eating beans every day is really unsatisfying for an everyday life. Like, how do you reward yourself after you finish well, okay, like listen, work? You th know? This, that's 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 entirely true. I, I do reward myself uh, uh, with orange you know, beans. <laughs> I do not – okay, this is a meme. I don't actually just eat beans all the time. And, in fact, I went for quite a while 
not eating beans for the last, I don't know, like month or something. I didn't eat beans for lunch. And there was a reason for that. It's because, like, a girl okay, moved into your dumb, apartment but, like, and wasn't accepting beans as the only meal that she <laughs> well, eats. I, I generally eat beans at work. I, uh, the, the, like, I have, a, I have a, a shelf just full of cans of beans <laughs> at work that I just open up and grab a can and eat. But it's like, um, like I left this particular batch in my car in the winter, and it had frozen and then thawed. Oh. And the thing was, then when I had eaten the beans, they were, like, gross, and I didn't, like, they were even more unpleasant than normal. They're, normally, they're pretty good. But these were particularly Nate was looking forward to his daily bean treat, but yeah. unfortunately, yeah. he was met well, with something but, entirely but see, different. This is the thing. This is where utilitarianism can bite you in the ass, because I, I, I am a human being, and I, I think you'll like this. Um, it's that... So I I just wasn't eating my beans because they were like this this particular batch had like frozen and thawed and was just gross and unpleasant. And so for like a month, I kept telling myself, oh, I really got to eat these beans for lunch. And, oh, fuck it. I'll just go get fucking McDonald's or something. You should have thrown um, away those beans and just got well, beans. That, that is exactly what I did last week. I finally yeah. was like, you know what? The, the, the existence of these beans are literally preventing me from eating beans. Yeah. I need to destroy them and start fresh. <laughs> so I did. So I threw them all in the trash and then bought a whole new batch of beans. And now I'm eating them again. And it's much better. Right. But see, that's what I'm trying to say. I am a man with many weaknesses. I go out. And I like to preach ideas, which I think is valuable. But everyone has flaws. And I admit, I'm a man of many, many flaws. I do not stick to my plans all the time. I have missed uh, on Monday I didn't work out. And then last week's Monday I missed that as well. So I've only been working out twice a week for the last couple of weeks. And that's terrible. That's, that's less abysmal. Than I've been working out. Well, there you go. See, I'm an embarrassment. I'm an yeah. embarrassment. Uh, but, but I know the right things to do. And I'm slowly gearing myself more in that direction yeah. like my my youtube success came from a cold hard analysis of like okay what's happening now it's not working out and if you know marginal success so far but i'm working on it uh what i've been doing up to this point has not been working out i have to reevaluate and figure something out and so i just you know made up me a math uh, got that idea in my head just did it it was great and now it's been rejiggered doing weaguas and stuff and it's more in line with the formula. I'm still right, trying to make the big projects, that, you know, whatever. You're getting into but the like, weeds here a little bit. But I, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted yeah. to bring up – oh, shit, I forgot what I wanted to bring up. Never mind. Fucking you just keep okay, going, well, you buddy. You just go on all day. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> all I'm saying all I'm saying is that with me, I, I, like I said before, I like to start with having the right principles. The right principles are in place so that then I personally, for, for my life – can then like work on you know quote unquote laws or yeah. just like strategies that now I'm going I to employ. To I remember get what I wanted. To okay, talk go about. ahead. It was that you you were saying how you preach a lot and can't necessarily like you know practice it perfectly and. Um, yes. I have I th- weaknesses, many. Well, you know, we're all here on YouTube being like, th- we're, we're, we're here on a soapbox. Like, that's what we're mm-hmm. here to do. A lot of the times people make fun of me for the fact that, like, I'll say something mm-hmm. in a video and then totally contradict it later or make another video mm-hmm. that contradicts mm-hmm. it and do that all the time. And it's because these are just, like, these videos are just thoughts. They're just ideas. They're just, here's an idea. What if the world's like this? You know, like idea channel. Have these people not seen Steven Universe? You need to, here comes a thought, you let it come, and then you let it go. They need to, they need to catch up. Yeah. Great, great joke, Nate. Good job. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea what to park that one. Stevani, here comes a thought. That might alarm you. Come on. Oh, fuck you guys. No, none of us understood it. That was Steven Universe podcast number two on the PCP. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay. (laughs) Uh, who else wants to tell me how cool I am? <laughs> <laughs> what do you? Well, let's tell me more. Nate, utilitarianism sucks because human uh-huh. happiness is worthless. I sort of agree. I sort of including agree. weird utilitarianism. Well, okay. I here's the thing. I take a totally pragmatic view that I think human happiness is a non tangible good, and like I don't actually care about it. But what human happiness is important for is that human beings are machines that have a happiness gauge, and if that dips, they become less efficient. So it is in our best interest to keep people happy and productive. I, to- I think of it what, like that. What interest? To, to, to accomplish what ends, Nate. Why yeah. you okay, now, now you guys are talking about the whole like objective, like what's the purpose of life, like where are we going, what's it all about, and that's, that's I'm, where I, I can, I'm, that's where I'm, I'm, I can not, I'm not asking, I, I just want, what, to, what do you want humans for? What do you, what well, do you right, want but, them to but accomplish? It implies the question, and, and that's totally relevant. That, that's the foundation of all of this. Like, you have to start at bedrock, like where are we going, then how do we get there, you know, assess human nature, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, Starfleet, right? 
Starfleet, mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> uh, Starfleet is the vision of the future that seems like a rational place for human beings to go. And I don't think that's necessarily like the end point of where humans go. Like Star Starfleet, Star Trek is a very transitional phase for humanity, even in the show. It's it's a period of exploration, not a period of like we're done exploring, like we found everything, let's just work run our shit now. It's a period of trying to pursue, you know, the truths that exist outside of the current human perception. And I think as long as human beings are alive, there will always be things for us to discover and and new stuff. I mean, just obviously, obviously. So what Starfleet is to me is an idea of where humans could go sort of in the short term. This idea of being a multi-planetary colonizing, uh, you know, species. Shout out to my boy Elon. Uh, Having space travel, you know, and hopefully developing some sort of space travel that allows us to go faster than the speed of light. I mean, I don't know if that's actually going to happen or if it's practical, but that, you know, without that, we are kind of trapped exactly where we are right now in space. So hopefully we'll find something out that allows us to do that. Uh, You know, warps and whatnot in Star Trek. So, I mean, to me, and like, look at the, the ideas of the people of the world of Star Trek. You know, there's, there's like the Klingons who have their civilization, there's the Romulans, there's all those guys, but the Federation itself is like the United States, and it was made as a metaphor for the United States. It's a conglomerate of different allied races, of, of different aliens, and within the, within the Federation, every planet has autonomy over itself, uh, kind of self-governance, and within those states, within those systems, like on Earth right now, everyone still can just run their shit however they please. The thing that has changed about civilization in Star Trek is that want has been eliminated. It is a post-scarcity civilization. So what that means is, if you wake up, if you're born in, on Earth in Starfleet, they call it paradise now. It's just, it's just a paradise. Because you, you, you're born to your parents, you, know, you have your you know, teenage drugs and whatever. When you become an adult and you say, oh, you know what, uh, I want to open my passion life, uh, be a painter. I want to be a painter and devote myself to that. You have infinite resources with which to make that happen. You will not be hungry. You will be able to do this. I mean, there's probably limitations on space and stuff. But basically, you have everything at your disposal to pursue whatever kind of life you want. So right now, imagine what would life be like in, like, the inner city of Chicago, for example, which is, you know, gang violence, all these terrible things are happening. If all of a sudden, just everyone had everything that, like, they no longer had to fight for money because there's just, yeah. everyone's got food. You've what, got would there, all... what would there even, what need would there even be for crime in a civilization exactly. like that? If you just have what you want, like, the only thing at that point is, like, power and influence, which is real, which is a real thing you or have to account for. Or just sociopathy. So, yeah, and that kind of stuff, too. But, like, we can address those issues, but the main one is an economic lever that's been pulled. Just anything you want, you now can get, for, for the most part. Um... And with the, with the advance or with the development of these things called uh, food materializers, I, I'm forgetting the word. But like, for example, with that, you can just push a button; it makes food out of it. It combines subatomic particles that just exist around us what all the time. It assembles l- the food. L- l- let's let's yeah, move away go. from Star Trek lore to how it no never applies okay, to, to actual what we're talking about. Wait, here. wait. Let me give you some deep on the subject of lore. Here's some PCP uh-huh. lore for you. Some true facts. Hmm. Almost every single episode that I've been on, like, in recent months, mm. like clockwork, around the 55-minute mark, Nate will start ranting about something that I don't think I'm going to have a response to. <laughs> so I just get up and go to the bathroom and don't say anything, uh-huh. and I do it every show at almost the exact same time, like mm-hmm. 55 minutes. That's when Nate goes, like, bam, like hardcore <laughs> off the deep end, and I'm, like, checking out. Uh-huh. <laughs> we have no way to wrangle him. He's like a fucking bull. Like gone out stopped. of the yeah, I, yeah, I, I feel, I feel like there's not much that we can talk about because you're the the thing with the reason this is like a topic tell me why I'm is, wrong. It's not. Uh-huh. It's well, okay. I mean, there's there's things I about think, that. Okay, like, it, it's not about mm-hmm. um, what Star Trek is and why you want it. It's the fact that when it comes up in a podcast discussion. It doesn't make any sense. That's not and true. That is bullshit. It makes perfect sense. Like it, when? It sometimes makes sense, but it's like it. Well, no, you just don't want to hear it. Wait, you just wait. don't want to hear it. I don't That's think. The I don't think here. makes sense is the is the right phrase for it. I think it's it, more it that it's weird, weird that he brings it up in every context. <laughs> that like, there's it's my world view. Goddamn, it's a foundational Nobody else belief has I have. to do that with their world view. I don't. Have That's because your world views are like, weak and I cowardly. I don't have to bring up like that. I, I, everything I do is Gonzo, and all my values are revolve around Gonzo. Like every time I do a podcast, you know. Oh, here we go. All right, you fucking cunts. <laughs> this is what you were building up to, wasn't it? No, what? No, <laughs> I did nothing attack. wrong. Hashtag Nate did nothing wrong. What the fuck? <laughs> 
This is bullshit. No, all right. When? Wait, this when, is what I thought this podcast was supposed to be. That's why I thought this was the, uh, well, here the we people are. versus Nate. The last, time, uh, the last time we recorded this podcast yes. was like hot off the, 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 the heels of hmm. you being weird with utilitarianism recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we talked about it in that. I remember we talked about it. I don't mm-hmm. know what it was that we talked about, and I can't think of any examples. Mm. But it's just the, 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 that's the reason it became a meme, and that's the reason it is now a topic. Yeah, because I you keep bringing it up. You explaining what your worldview yeah. is, like, uh, <laughs> you know, you want you want uh, Starfleet to exist. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it makes sense. I don't really know what we can tell, uh, what we can say about it beyond. Well, that. I think it's it's because no, like it's, <clears throat> it's because Nate Nate wants wants Starfleet, Starfleet to happen. You want you want you what you. What you want is, from my understanding, is what you want is you want to better humanity, right? Humanity has like Correct. this grand destiny, this grand like 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 the, well, these, I mean, I think that we that we need might to be we might if we work at it, right? I mean, and it's what, that's way, what you want. You have this, this is, vision. The thing is, mm-hmm. the, I I don't mind your vision. I'm perfectly okay with you having your word utilitarianism. It's just it's funny and it your wasn't vision mean, shaming it, me right it, now. It, because oh, you yeah. bring it up in in topics and situations that seem weird, which Bull is why it's called weird shit, utilitarianism. It's weird. You're taking you're taking minute, small, compact issues that we talk about on the PCP and tying them tangentially into this like whole fate of humankind <laughs> in the future. And I think that's where the weird it, utilitarianism. It's alarming. Yeah. Yeah. Often the words. Example. What does like what the okay, lollies we'll have to like do a, with the future of humanity? We'll, we'll How do we like get the here animals from here? Podcast and Nate's like, case. so do we think animals need to come with us into space when we all leave <laughs> Earth? Like that's where the discussion. Well, that, gonna you're, go. ask, you're asking about uh, hu- uh, like the morality of how we treat animals, which is perfect. Like, how do we treat animals? Uh, I don't know. That's relevant. I just think that, that, I, I think that not you're only always how arguing... do we treat animals now, but how do we treat how do we treat animals in zero gravity? Well, okay. <laughs> Here's something that uh, Davu used to give me a lot of shit for whenever we had like political uh-huh. arguments, which is that I always argue from an idealistic perspective, which means like mm-hmm. you know whatever yeah. I want the world. Like, if we're gonna move the world in the direction that I think is perfect, here's the, mm-hmm. the things we should do. And Davu would always be like, yeah, but the world is not moving in that direction. We need to worry about the issues right now and like mm-hmm. how we deal with them in the moment. And so I, I do think it's both. funny that like I I sometimes feel as though you view every issue from the perspective of like how will we feel about this when Starfleet begins as opposed to like how do we feel about it right now, you know? You know, that's I don't even disagree with that to some degree. I would argue that I'm a very pragmatic person. But when when these things come up, uh, like yes, well, like, for example, um, like I understand the ideas of of movements. Let's say like like Black Lives Matter, for example, or, or feminism, or any those of these, like exist identi- in space. Oh yeah, that well, right now. I, I I hope <laughs> not because I hope by then we don't need them to exist. But like here's. Like, that's the thing. This is sort of, like, identitarianism, I think, is relevant to this. Because, like, any individual issue of, of this kind, like, I think will no longer matter if we address the larger issues of, like, individualism. Like, if, if our core principle as a civilization is, like, individualism, then it's a complete waste of time to focus on, like, pushing for, for you know, like, quotas in, in stuff that may or may not be founded on science and you know, like like women quotas at Google or any of this kind of shit. Like, I, what I want to do is focus on the topics that will really matter long term. And I fully admit, I am it's, less invested in short term ones. That is true. Yeah. That is it, true. It, it, it's it's just it's just funny. It's just funny how like if a podcast on the procrastinators goes mm-hmm. long enough, it will turn into a discussion about Starfleet yeah. and how all of what we have been talking about will affect like the the, the heart of the issue, the kingdom. To me, that makes perfect of, sense. Of, of, it of, makes yes, it makes know. sense to me too because like. It, I used to have a gimmick in my writing when I was younger mm. that, like, every time I wanted to explain something, I would start from, like, the beginning of the universe. Like, I'd always be okay. like, oh, the Big okay. Bang happened, and therefore, <laughs> uh, eventually this led to humans, and because we developed in this way, like, this is how we evolved, this is why we mm. um, say I'm sorry to each other, you know? Like, okay. okay. So, I get I get coming from that perspective, that's why I like that that happens on the PCP, like... But on mm-hmm. the other hand, it does kind of make a lot of episodes end up samey, where we kind of go down the same road, and, like, the answer to what we're gonna do when Starfleet happens is often the same. And, um, I also want to <laughs> yeah. say that 
we we can call it weird utilitarianism, but Nate is just any Star Trek Next Generation fan because they totally all true. talk completely like this. true. Like if you listen to Mike the Klossa from Red Letter Media or Neil X, like all these guys who are into TNG, all they do is talk about Starfleet and what we can do to get there and shit. Because we're enlightened, we fucking figured it out. You're welcome for our wisdom. <laughs> yeah. The wisdom of watching a television show. The wisdom of watching a children's cartoon. Yeah, basically. We we were all in line by by MILP. No, it's an incredible show of all time. We were all in line, Tom. Don't don't ask me. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Hey, you know, MLP, MLK, (laughs) Junior. I'm just saying. (laughs) Social importance. Hey, hey, how come how come there's an MLK day and there's no MLP day? That's what I want to know. Wait, do you do you think that we're gonna we're gonna have our our whole new enlightenment when when MLP TNG comes back and we have we have the pony version of Captain (laughs) Picard to Twilight Sparkles Captain Kirk? That's way What's too easy to imagine. Survive? Like, like if if the current MLP FAM is like the original Star Trek, like I could totally mm-hmm. imagine them rebooting it with a like they are next rebooting gen it like in, in a year or two. Oh wow, really? Well, the next with, season, what? the next season's the last really? one, and they're rebooting. People were pissed. What? No yeah. way. Hey, about fucking time. That's all I, I kind guess. Of agree. It has been a decade, I think. <laughs> yeah. What, 2011, uh, eight I think. years, yeah, yeah, something like that. All right, all right, all right. I, I think we've I think we've discussed like what you want out of weird childhoodism. Let's discuss like like what we danced around earlier because I think that's for, yeah. I don't know. Are we out of things to say about that particularly? Uh, uh, I mean, I, you can go, go on. You can go back to another topic. Yeah. <clears throat> what 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 do you want to get us to Starfleet? What do you want okay. to do? Uh, well, your, see, that, that's the thing. What are People tenets? accuse me. People accuse me as well of being, like, idealistic when it comes to this. But, like, I, I really, I like, that's like getting mad at a philosopher for arguing about philosophy and, like, having a focus on philosophy. Because, like, yeah, like, you can get mad that I keep going back to the same thing. But I, I really approach the world with these thoughts. Just, you know, you can ask my fucking girlfriend how I go on these, like, retarded tangents about, like, phil- like why the way I'm doing or addressing them is because of a philosophical reason. It's like, Nate, shut the fuck up. I don't care. Just Bless buy the coffee. Soul. I don't care right now about, like, the <laughs> fact that, like, they might have used, like, immoral means to mine the coffee beans that are going to mine to buy from the, the earth. fucking <laughs> coffee. You know, d- like, d- deep in the I, chocolate man. Let me tell you, exactly. Nate, I, ma- I made it very clear when I was buying um, an engagement mm-hmm. ring that I was like, you know these are all, like, at the cost of human suffering, right? Like, yeah, these diamonds right, right. are, uh, you know... I mean, I'll buy you the diamond, because I don't want to look like a cheapskate, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know... Just, just let you know. As long as you know, well, like, a lot of black people we, had yeah. to die to get this on your uh, We're participating hand, in some fucked... Like, every iPhone, valuable. every <laughs> smartphone is made with minerals that come from some fucked up situations, everybody, oh, yeah. so... It's good to think about these things. I have is is this a real thing. thing you have to worry about, or is it just an interesting, like, haha, where you want to I mean, impress d- people? I mean, do you care you about say. the suffering of people uh, in, like, third I mean, world countries? I mean, if so, then yeah, I, you should I care. I try to be as. Like, I don't really care. I though, try to be, so. like, mildly conscious <laughs> about. conscientious yeah. about certain things, but it really depends on, like, do I want it? Like, yeah. it, with cigarettes, I quit cigarettes for a while um, after a John mm-hmm. Oliver episode where he was breaking down just, like, how fucking evil the cigarette corporations are. They, like, mm. hawk this shit to two-year-olds in India and stuff like that. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I was like, man, that's really bad behavior. And I had a pack of Camel cigarettes, and that was one of the companies that he called out at the time. And I just threw it in the trash, and I was like, fuck mm-hmm. smoking. I'm going to roll my own tobacco. <laughs> um, <laughs> quickly realized that, he like, if you... his own. Well, if you the thing is, if you go it. and like buy a pack of tobacco, they're all branded. Like you just are buying yeah, like yeah. Camel tobacco to roll your own cigarettes with, unless well, you like grow your own. Well, the profit margin's shit, lower, so you're doing your part. Far, you know. So at some point, I was just like, okay, like I don't want to support this corporation, but I want cigarettes, mm-hmm. and I don't want to have to grow and roll my own. And that's why yeah. we let these corporations exist in the first place is to pro- that's right provide convenient. us with it's- the things that we can't. You know, farm ourselves. And, like, if I was – now, don't get me wrong. I would encourage, if anybody could, to try to compete with these companies and sell some homegrown tobacco. And if it was in my town, I'd probably go for that instead. It would probably be better, you know, Mm -hmm. probably be a better Mm -hmm. product. And I I would encourage people, like, shop local and don't be um, mind – 
controlled by the giant corporations like McDonald's and fucking Walmart that just create the yeah. same building a thousand times so you get used to it. So you're just mm-hmm. like, oh, this is what's normal. This is what's right. You know, I shouldn't go to that store that looks a little run down that's in my town, even though it's like locally yep. owned and operated yeah. and the food is amazing and it's been around for 20 years and everybody loves it. But like it yeah. looks dingy and Walmart's right there. You got to get out of that mindset because like a lot of the, your local shit is better. Some of it's bad. True. Some of it. I've got a, a we've got a place we go to called that we call Sketch Mart that um, mm-hmm. will just sell you expired food. And uh, <laughs> they deserve to probably get in trouble. Wait, for it's it. actually called Sketchmart. No, we call it that. <laughs> okay, yeah. but like, well, okay, because so, it's so sketchy like the, as fuck, and everyone who works there looks like they're in the mob, and some of them are like open carry guys. And sometimes okay. we hear conversations like, "Oh, when did you get out of jail?" While we're in there, we're like, well, "What mm, is this?" Mm. It, it feels like an Italian mafia run a store, and I wouldn't well, be surprised okay, so if like, it was. It, just, just going back a little bit, like I, I just want to point out that like everyone in the world is a utilitarian when it comes to their smartphone, for example, because mm-hmm. like there are there are conflict minerals in your smartphone if you own one, and you definitely do. So you are supporting like, um, you know, like I don't know, like African fucking people getting fucked up in mines and shit for rare minerals that we it, need from those it, places. In such a, uh, an, an infinitesimal and roundabout way that it's hard you can't even register it as No, but if you case. support... Well, th- that's exactly... You are making a calculation that it is of more value to you to use this cell phone than it is suffering for these people who are being taken advantage of to produce this material. You're making that calculation whether you like it or not. You're doing yeah. it. So the, we're, as long as you know, you're aware, I think the main reason they get away with it is that most people are unaware. And That's probably true. Nobody probably wants true. to be the one who breaks the huge story that kills your ad advertisers. But see, I'm you know? aware, and we're like, all aware, and we are now guilty of yeah. of you know facilitating this. And I we mean, should dude, it's keep so that hard. In mind. I made a video about why pe- everyone on YouTube needs to like stop talking about mm-hmm. Netflix because of the fact that like. Netflix right, owns right. YouTube right now. Like they 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 can put out whatever they want, and everyone on YouTube's going to talk about it. And all mm-hmm. the ads on my video were for fucking Netflix because Netflix <laughs> buys out all the ad space on YouTube. I can't even. The only way I could have controlled that is to turn off the ad revenue. But that just means I'm not going to get any ad revenue off this video. Yeah, so, so. fuck that. Right? I, right. You yeah. know, you know how like it, the the whole like uh, products uh, have been like the the kids in Africa have been killed to make an iPhone. Yeah. And, and all that and and you you look around at your your white privileged life and you're like mm-hmm. well I mean I guess I've killed hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, should I, I just kill myself and and, and well, end all of the suffering or sh- will it make no so much little difference that it's basically just like who cares I mean the healthy yeah, way I'm to think girl. about it I guess would be I've consumed all this shit I've caused the, I, I'm, I'm always thinking about, like, my footprint on the world. Not, like, my carbon yeah. footprint, per se, but, like, my uh, human death toll, I guess. Sure, Like, sure. how much of what I've consumed could have, like, uh, the excess that I've consumed, rather. Like, not just mm. what's kept me alive, but, like, all the excess consumption, all the excess stuff I've bought. How many people could have been helped with that, with that money or that food? But then I have to think, well, okay... Whatever I owe the world, that's what I now have to pay forward. Like, mm. I have to make stuff that's good enough or I have to help enough people to, like, make up for this. Um, for at least the eight human lives that I've taken with my YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> the, the, at least. Oh, God. 618 um, years of view time. So Yeah. At okay. least eight human lives have been spent watching my YouTube videos. That is eight people who have died, well, who have lived and died their entire lives just watching my YouTube channel. That, that's an interesting way to think about it. I'm not sure I would I would exactly say it works out that way. Like, people might have just gotten more benefit out of your videos from the time. But, but whatever. Like, I just want to say that, like, the, yeah, like, nobody, none of you listening, I'm sure, give a fucking shit about, like, I don't know, maybe there was people in Ukraine today who got, like, killed by Russian soldiers during the occupation of Ukraine that's happening. Uh, or, you know, the, the part of Ukraine or whatever. Like, do you care? No. I you definitely don't. And, I, 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 like, I don't know, it got anschluscht or whatever the fucking word is. It got <laughs> absorbed. Um, so, like, Wait, did the whole country people... just get absorbed and nobody saw no, no, no. it? No, no, no. It was it was one piece oh, that had yeah. been, like, contested between Ukraine and, and Russia. Okay. And it is currently under Russian control. Like, they just took it. And actually, the it people there kind of wanted it, but not everybody did. So it's it's a complicated... But, There's you know, a ton even of aside fucking crazy that, shit going on in the world. Like, Venezuela like, what, what about... is still a shithole. Yeah, Venezuela's a nightmare. What about the fact that Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, like, it executes gay people... 
it, it, it thinks still that atheism a literal absolute it, monarchy in 2018. It, yeah, yeah, and it, it classifies atheism as terrorism. That's what it does. Jeez. If you are an atheist yeah. in Saudi Arabia, you are considered a terrorist for holding I, that belief. I don't okay. think. I don't, but I don't wait, think... the point the point I'm getting to here, the point I'm getting to is that the reason that you don't care, viewers, about any of this shit, at least you, you don't waste any time thinking about it, even though the injustices are, like, incalculable and need to be addressed with, or need to be addressed in, in like, we would think they need to be addressed, is because people are tribal, and people were not designed to live in a global civilization. But no. we do now, and we're aware of all the fucked up shit that's happening around the world, but we're still tribal. That is, that, like, we care about the people in our immediate vicinity, about the shit we see with our eyes. We don't care about okay. the 100,000 people that, that die, that get reported I mean, on CNN. I, we I, just I, don't I, care, I, and, that's because, and that's because this is human nature, and yeah. human nature is immoral. You cannot I, fall back on it's just human nature. That's just yeah. how we are. There are defects in the system. So, totally so Nate, be addressed. Totally I agree, I agree with, Nate, that. with that. Nate, I have a question for you then. And this yeah. is some, and I'm not I'm not trying to put you in a gotcha. I'm just kind of curious. Okay. Is that you're talking about Starfleet and like you're putting all this value on the future of humanity. Why are you so willing to pass off the present of humanity? Um because I am a weak tribal human like everybody else. So so you you're you're just you're hoping future people fix your problem. Essentially. Uh, absolutely not. I am aware of the problems that exist in the world. I think that we have to find ways to address them. And, like, I I'm aware that we need magical future technology to make Starfleet real, that we have no guarantee will ever exist. Uh, I but we can get closer by doing things like optimizing uh, incidentally, the, the, the rate of production and, you know, yeah. I think ahead. that what Starfleet is is essentially trying to make a human tribe. Like, that's what the show is about, is that Correct. all of humans, even though we're not supposed to, like, in you know, be a global community per se, like, we're not, we're not um, genetically we built that way. disposed yeah. to it, yeah. but it would be possible if everyone understood each other enough and there was no reason for them to fight, you know? Indeed. Um, but, Indeed. And so that's, like, the idea. And then there's, of course, they're still fighting, though, because as turns out, there's other tribes out there in the universe. And well, Even in Starfleet, in, in uh, Deep Space Nine, there's a big war against these guys called the Maquis uh -huh. that are, they're just humans that settled in this contested area. Uh, and the Kardashians, this other alien race, like they're Whoa. just like, oh, we're taking this back now. Uh, and the 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 Maquis were just like, uh, no, like this is ours now. And so like those guys actually started a war against the Federation and the Cardassians. So like, yeah, like obviously these things still happen on like political and uh, do they get and, fucking and destroyed? Story. Like, wouldn't they? Well, be a much they, they were really faction? sneaky. They were really really sneaky. But th I think they still Vietnam, existed dude. by the end of that series. Good old yeah, fashioned they, guerrilla warfare, even in space. Pretty much. Pretty I, I much. think it's inaccurate to say that people, who, like, like if they were presented, like, not everyone has, like, a radar, like, oh, where are people mm. dying right now? There's someone dying in Ukraine right now? Well, I feel sad now. If someone were to be alerted to, like, a news article, it wouldn't just be, like, a blanket, just like, oh, I don't care, just look away now. People, I think, I think most people, most people in the comments, most people listening will probably feel a little bit bad about it, but there's just no practical way that you well, can I be, like, that you can, that you can make sure that people everywhere don't die. Well, I think it comes down to like a lot of people. Like, like it's just like uh, you know the thing everybody says. You want to help people, you got to help yourself first. You want to be selfless, you have to be selfish. Like capitalism the, has done the, more good for the world the than majority any form of, of people, socialism or collectivism. Like, like, like even if I said right now, like I want to make a difference, like I yeah. can't even keep my shit straight. You know, like I'm in no position to help anybody else because I can barely help myself. And I well, think that, that the is majority exactly, of people. Exactly have that problem like, like but that that is a burden that humankind should take up and, and people try it like it is it is a choice here of we could give up or we could try and we might break under the strain of doing so and i'm not saying like we should nanny state it up what we should do is apply principles across the board that we think will best facilitate us to getting to whatever destiny we choose uh, starting now that's what i you know that's really what i think so it's about finding the philosophy that makes the most sense to advance, and this is what this is what people argue all the time. This is why we have political arguments for these exact reasons. Uh, I, I personally think that like it would be best if we left it up to individuals to flourish on their own and have less state intervention and stuff, and just let people do what they want. But and I'm I'm willing to hear arguments uh, of all kinds, and I do. I listen to political stuff all the time, right. and different people's views on this stuff. Uh, well, but I I have, like I have come to a conclusion, and I think that it's a pretty good one. But I'm willing to evolve it at any time. And this is not passing things off to the future like, oh, if only we had replicators, then everything would be great. So, guys, we need to make replicators. What are we doing not investing in replicator technology? I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, like, let's 
continue to encourage capitalism because capitalism seems to get results. It's got issues that we should work on, but we should up, like continue to champion that because I think it's like the best way to go. And then, uh, yeah, go on, Munchie. You know, they just released a new version of capitalism called anarcho capitalism. I think we should upgrade to that version so we can get the ball really. <laughs> there, there's good things here. and bad things about it, you know. But I, I've learned, I've heard about it. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've heard know, about man. that game. I think it's pretty good. I think we're gonna try yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. I've been watching the trailers. I, 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 I don't know. Like th- talking about all this, I don't know whether mm-hmm. I have a worldview. Like, mm-hmm. like it, it just. Even like if I sat down and so- thought to myself, "Well, what do I think?" Mm-hmm. It would probably just be blank space. Where like I don't know. My, I, do I, I love think my Taylor views Swift. are contradictory to one another most of the time, and I think that the fact that I am contradictory to myself and the fact that I think multiple things is my worldview. Because because I I'm very against uh not as a blanket just all the time, but I'm very against generally speaking tribalism and them ver- like me versus you. I'm sure. very well, against that's that a to myself. Of a oh, sort. Yeah. Of a sort. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's things I I feel mm-hmm. uh. So such as emotion. That's a worldview like, of a sort, said Nate, snickering well, to himself. Uh, no, 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 you could be that, that it's, you were a third it's kind world of broad, fucking but, piece of shit who I don't care if you die. But, or but, not. but like, but, but, but like, I'm thinking about this, and I'm, I'm, uh-huh. I'm realizing right now it, why people like labels of worldviews they that they can latch onto. Because if I, w- I don't, I would need to like, it, like, look inside myself and think about every single thing to mm-hmm. come up with like a like I have worldviews on all different types of. Of 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 things like I don't have like a blanket worldview, and if yeah. there was one that would like uh, approximate basically the things I say, I would at- at- ascribe myself to that because yeah. it's easier than trying to think of every single individual thing. Well, see, that's why I, uh, pe- like is, Tumblr culture, like the fucking oh. gloom genders out there and shit. You know, like <laughs> people love to. Uh, by the way, gloom gender. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was like that's this is a gender is that a is Pokemon? it is like fifty percent female. 25% like fucking shadow from Sonic no, it was and then Asuka. like 50% no, it was, it was, it was Asuka, Asuka and Cat it, it was part Cat part Asuka and mostly gloom as in depression yeah. and sadness this is the oh, gender God. of this that was, person that was a legendary moment it was legendary I've never seen Con. this before please show it to me we, we, oh god I don't know if I could find it but like it, me, me Ben and Nate were on our way to, to BronyCon like 2014 or whatever and yeah. I was just on the Tumblr and I just happened to stumble upon this thing and we like had That's stopped right. at a rest station and I'm like guys do you need a mental rest right now? Do you want to just yeah. like reset your brain for a quick sec? Check yeah. this out. And we all had a good old chuckle. What a legend. Uh, by the way, I, I searched gloom gender on Urban Dictionary. It doesn't even have a definition. It yeah. does not. I feel like one person I feel like that. I think, I think gloom, gloom gender was someone's weird utilitarianism. This, it, that's exactly what I was going to say. This, sound, this, this is, is going to sound a little bit hypocritical. This is going <laughs> to, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's going to sound a little hypocritical, but like what I, these people continue to splinter down, like, but for, they take a thing like, like, like gender, and they splinter it down into a little special identity that they can latch onto. And weird, weird utilitarian, weird utilitarianism is actually a meme that is not a real thing. It doesn't what mean it's worth, anything. I always thought that the gloom gender thing seemed like it was um, intention, like not not satirical per se, but is intended know, to be dude. kind of funny, like. It's, it's, the fact that it's it like twelve percent Oscar was, is your gender and eighty percent gloom. Think, is it, like the it. Whole, people have no. lost the plot on gender. The, the, the whole know Tumblr it was written in this very like in this very like childish dialogue that made it hard to determine yeah. if it was sincere or not. I don't. I don't think that it's insincere. I just think that it's intentionally funny. Like, well, you so can, uh, do we, is what we have here like a kid just like playing with gender? Is that I what's going so. on here? I think that's what's going on in that indeed. particular case. Okay, I think, but I mean, that's the kind thing of that shit you just that is don't literally know. the kind of shit I would would have done. Like when I was fourteen, it is just like, is factually inaccurate, and it's like well, they it's, deserve to be told I think that that's they're part wrong. Part of the point is that it's fa- like it's just what kind of a fuck you to anybody who says you can't be whatever you want. You know, but you it's literally like, can't be oh, this. You, That's you not I'm real. Male? No, I'm fucking eighty percent gloom, bitch. What are you gonna? <laughs> well, it's it's not that it's not real I'm because totally uh, not, sex man. and gender are considered two different things by this by no, this community. But, but that, saying like, that you're twelve percent Asuka as your fucking gender. <laughs> Doesn't Gen- make, but the like, point, not the it's a deconstruction of, of what gender is, because de- gender doesn't really have a clear definition. Like, uh, according to the the principles that these people are operating under, okay, okay. the there's a there's a, a strong disconnect between the concepts of sex and gender. Your sex is what genitals that. do I have? Your gender is well, how do I see myself? Sort of. Mm-hmm. And so I think if this person sees themselves, it's like 
well, if gender doesn't matter anyways, if saying male, female, whatever, it doesn't actually mean anything, I might as well just make up my own. That like that I, like, that communicates how I see I myself to other people. I understand that perspective. I just don't understand. But like my always weird like okay thought to that is like why even hijack the term gender why not just like say this is my because you're tr- it's like point. it's just like postmodern art you put it in a museum I, to okay here's the thing well, postmodern art sucks so i guess i totally i, guess I have <laughs> less than no time to in indulge fact, I people only who like want to tell me art and i think this podcast is postmodern art uh, well, sure. I can't. I, I can't I, be a part of it anymore. I'm just associating I less, immediately. I, I have less than no time to indulge someone who wants to tell me that their gender is a fictional character. I, I have no time for it. I have. I mean, I that's not, not, it's not worthy. It's a name. very. It's a very young person's idea of how to like deconstruct and subvert this idea. Like, the problem is that serious people take this seriously, and they're they, like, though? "Yeah, I got to respect their gender." Do dude. they? I don't it. know if anybody takes like. I mean, I well, don't okay, think maybe it's, not I don't think one. it's quote taking it seriously to say like, "I respect your decision to call yourself whatever the fuck." you want like it's not that i'm saying like oh i respect your gender like i totally what, what agree I'm that you are 25 percent oscar it's just like be, call yourself whatever you want what you know? i'm objecting to is the idea that i would ever have to validate someone's opinion of themselves well, in any you, way you're, you're you're still in new york right isn't like on the books right now there's like 40 something genders in new york and like you could be fine I, well, i'm like, not sure man. okay what if what if you think you're fucking dope what if you think you're fucking dope and i think you're fucking shit am i oppressing your worldview am i dope i wouldn't shit. i wouldn't say you're <laughs> i wouldn't say you're yeah. Pressing their well, okay. Actually, I it's would, the same shit. I'll say that you are, but it's not a bad thing. Like everyone's I worldview agree. should be oppressed because all of us I are think fucking you wrong about resistance. everything. So we all deserve to be like horribly like lambasted it's for our views. Bad, In fact, I agree. Realistically, uh, as human beings, we probably mm-hmm. don't even perceive the reality of our universe we live in, and we're probably wrong about fucking everything. Yeah, probably, probably. You know? like, all I math probably doesn't even actually work in like the well, next, like one maybe. dimension up. <laughs> none of it makes. sense. I could say you know? I could go on a thing about that. <laughs> ben, tell us. Go on your Please. thing. I want to well, hear it. Well, I want to hear math, it. Math works definitionally because we created it and we, we created the axioms that it works on. So, like, maybe Digi means like math physics? is not a thing that we discovered. Math is like a system that we invented and it works like within our own definitions. I, I feel like this entire podcast has just been Tom, Nate, and Digi talking endlessly and then Hippo, <laughs> me, and Ben just being disgruntled but not really knowing how to express it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> like, sure. I don't sure. know. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, this, this, was, this was the, it, this was the intellectuals yeah, episode. You guys can I'm come shifting, back I'm later. Shifting into, I'm shifting into disgruntled gender right now. It's hard <laughs> to... Just... The, 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 the way to, to solve that for me is to, to bring up the, 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 the previous, oh like, God. lost episode of you, weird utilitarianism that we did record, and I, I posted my audio on Give and Take. You just lay, just play both of those videos at the same time, and I'll basically have the same points. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'll, okay. I'll have more to well, say. Well, I, I just yeah. realized, yeah. Nate, you just gave me a great idea for the term mm. gender drifting. Like, if you if you need to like pull mm. off like, like five Tokyo cons- drifting, if you need to pull off five consecutive <laughs> hair point genders in like like you know yeah. like while oh, blasting God. running in the nineties, you're like, oh shit, I gotta be like, I gotta yeah. be a man, a woman, a gloom. A fucking vile plume, and I gotta yeah. be a fucking yeah. like a, a ghost by the end of the night. And the like, prom is tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> and you gotta get all five. <laughs> the only way to do it is gender drifting. That's where did, did you, you know that's you, not bad. You, you just stop. You just take your foot off the pedal of the gender, and you just like flow through the conversation. You know, like you, you don't want the gender. gender yeah. drift, you just allow real. it to flow through you, like Bruce it, Lee with you, water. You know, it's funny that you take it that way because I took it to be the opposite. Gen- gender drifting should be like like a slower version of gender fluid where when you're gender fluid you know there, there are instances where you're not but but when you're gender drifting it's like a okay. percentage based you've, each you've time run into the same problem i ran into last time i called ones. something drifting which is mm. that you're thinking of it in terms of like drifting along and i'm thinking of it in terms yeah. of tokyo drift. yeah hardcore yeah, yeah. you know yeah, mario yeah. kart yeah. ds drifting well, you're it, getting it, your acceleration it, you're building up your charge so you can release that and just burst forward to the speed in the in the show <laughs> like boost, boost forward to the speed of gender you see <laughs> exactly. you see in the in the <laughs> First season of Initial D, there's this gigantic mountain that has five consecutive hair point turns on it. Wait, and what? so, like, the whole show is about how, like, how can you tackle this five consecutive hair point turns? And the only way to do it is with Is that with the drifting. one with the Donkey Kong, uh, like, barrel that shoots you to the top? Uh, yes. That's uh, exactly in Mario Kart. One. That's a that's how we're going to build Starfleet, because one. nothing. the only thing that travels faster than light is gender. We you have to build gender <laughs> arrow <laughs> <for> space <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. Yo, okay, for real though, I actually, I, I just want to be, I, I do respect like transgender people and people with non-traditional gender identities. That's that's cool, man. I, you do you. Just want to let you know, I have no hatred in my heart. Do, I just do, don't. You, don't you think it's, it's sad that we can... have to make that addendum though? That we look. I know, well, but that's Tom, the world we I, live I, feel, I feel like the reason why Tom, uh, Renee has to say that because, because he consistently says that he doesn't care about them at all. I think it's understandable <laughs> I don't why care they would about have any that identities. Thing. God damn it! I'm consistent here. And also, for what it's like, worth, there is like a strong like culture on YouTube of like conservative people who do have a problem with trans people. So like, I yeah, understand yeah. why people are like wary. Why some like for the PCP has like a weirdly large trans audience, which is entirely my fault. It is I think, interesting because I have a weirdly sure. large trans audience, but like, <laughs> um. But I, I do think that some of those people, you know, come here and they're, like, uncomfortable at first because they're like, I don't know if these guys would hang out with me if I was there, you know, because they're afraid that, like, we're going to treat them if you're a gloom weird. gender, I, I will hang I, out with you, but I will laugh at the fact that you call yourself gloom gender. I mean, I would That's love to do. hang out with that gloom gender. I would love to meet them and pick their brain. Like, sure. the thing with, with the PCP is that... We're really, really edgy a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Even, we have no problem. Like, we're not the, the, the sort of people who would disassociate with a type of person because it's kind of funny what they are mm-hmm. to us. In, in, in like, 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 that a, makes like me like them more, way. that they're funny. And then I don't <laughs> get sure. there. All right, do we want to move to questions, like, or do we have more to say about weird utilitarianism? I, I feel like we've run the gamut here. Yeah, it's uh, been an hour I, and a half. It has Clo- uh, closing points. Anyone? Anyone on this thing? Shouldn't I guess? I don't know what happened. I I I I want to talk the briefly huge. about how okay. like like how have you come to the point in your life where you are, or at least you claim to be, and I'm mm. sure that you are, like consistent in 100 percent of the facets in your life, where everyone can like every one of the choices in your life can be whittled back to weird utilitarianism, or or if it occasionally can't, it is an insane no, bias. Uh, what, what I will say is, is, I don't think it's a bias. What it is is a consistent application of my current worldviews that are absolutely subject to change. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that that's what it is. It's just for the last I don't know maybe like three or four years, I have been like, this really seems like the right approach to me, and I'm always on the lookout for ways that I might be wrong. And in fact, I'm I'm hearing some critical points, like to utilitarianism as a whole. Like, you know, there's always the ideas of like, um, you know, when you put too much, like like these guys were memeing about like, oh, if you're a utilitarianism, if you're a utilitarian, you have to murder people and steal their organs to save more lives. Like that is ridiculous. It like, it violates some foundational stuff. It doesn't make sense. Totally bullshit point. Uh, yeah, but I really feel I strive in all things to be completely honest and fair to all ideas and it just so, but I do have opinions and I have, I have experiences in my life and I have arrived at a place where I really think that like capitalism has been shown to work. It really works well, but it needs some, you know, regulation, uh, Like, the future presented in Star Trek, I think, is a good vision for where human beings should, like, keep in mind, as a star, as a distant star in our mind, to head towards. And I think, like, treating things in a utilitarian way, generally speaking, is, like, the most moral... And to do the most good for the world. It be, and because of all these things, like, I, I, like there's a little silly label on that stuff for, for my views of weird utilitarianism. Two, two points on that. Yeah. First of all, what I meant was practically, like, have you ever sat down and thought, like, I need to change some opinions of mine? Or have you warped your philosophy to set your own warped. personal opinions? And, 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 and then second of all, if you mm-hmm. – like, you, you keep – like, like, in any way that, like, this is, like, a far-off thing for Starfleet, which, which it probably is. But yeah. then, like, sh- like, then certainly it shouldn't take up this much time of the fucking podcast if it's such a far-off, distant, like, pie-in-the-sky thing. Um, okay, to your first point, uh, I am subject every single day to, uh, examination of my ideas. I, I mean, obviously, everyone gets attached to their worldview to some degree. I do not feel I am overly attached to my worldview on, on these economic ideas, uh, in some ways, like my my like my atheism, I am very very convinced that I am right on that. But I could be corrected. I could absolutely be correct if there was evidence to the contrary. But none is forthcoming. Um, but but to your other point of is is it a utilitarian idea to bring up weird utilitarianism so much in the podcast? Are we producing the most wealth for the world in doing so? Is that the most useful use of time? Uh, I don't know. We just have to react to market forces and let them dictate whether or not it's the right way to go. Um, and that's it. I, I, I think that I bring it up 
when it is occurs to me, when when something comes to, occurs to me that that resonates with my worldview on this stuff, I bring it up because that's just what this podcast is. It's a it's a uh, it's a train of thought. Well, yeah. I I hope that now that we have made this big uh, dump of mm. info on your worldview, yes. it will it will happen less often. Cannot promise that, but I, here's what I'll tell you. Though. <laughs> I, 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 I hope that if it comes up, we can just say, "I'll oh, just go watch episode 99 well, well, and, well, and then g- skip." Uh, skip, skip you, you, else. you edit a lot of these episodes, so every time he goes on a weird utilitarian or something, just cut it out. Just be like, "And now go to PCP episode 99 to understand what the fuck the 15 uh, minutes and just save cut you out are." Three hours of your life. Instead yeah. of doing that, instead of doing that, <laughs> please edit this entire podcast into that section <laughs> of that podcast and play it in its entirety. That if would you ever be see seven hour episodes. The that's PCP. Three. Yeah. But every time Nate opens his mouth, we play the entire weird utilitarianism. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, exactly. God. Some someone's gonna do Wait, that, and co- they're gonna be the hero do. of. Time. Please do it. Co- complete with complete with the forty minutes of not talking about weird. That includes course, every time Nate important. says right while someone else is talking. Like every yeah. time he just goes ah <laughs> right right. You have to also put the entire <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, excellent. I think I am always case. right. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. I, I think that we're we're good. We're good on that. All right, let's, you want some uh, questions? Let's, we'll get some questions? Let's do all right, it, motherfuckers. Let's, see, we'll, let's we'll get into some goddamn questions. Um, oh, oh, I, I I like this one from the Procrastinators Patreon Questions Lounge. Pledge one dollar at least, and you can get in this exclusive club, secret club that you can't tell anyone about, or you'll be banned. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have from Cappy. What is the human body lacking? A built-in gun. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately thought tentacles. Hmm. Like, Ten- okay. like okay. I don't feel I have enough dicks. Mm. I feel <laughs> one is not enough. I... Women have more than one hole, and lots of yeah. like play. Yeah. Like, okay, the reason tentacle porn is so great is that it's just like it wraps all around her and fills all the holes, right? Sure. Like, and I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to just wrap around and fill everything all at once and not have to, like, move around and do all that other shit. I just want to be, like, a monster that just I'm just, I'm just too tentacles. lazy to bank, guys. I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't want to move. I just want to be able to do, do it want, all at once. you've taken this wholesome Christian podcast into a perverse <laughs> and unsettling <laughs> time. Take He's that right. you just said now. Do you, do you think, uh, oh, shit, like, fucking... like, the tentacles should all come from, like, your groin area? Like, there's just an Yeah, or does it come from everywhere? Yeah, or does it come from everywhere? Wait, are you? Oh, are you asking? Uh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention because uh, a fucking famous gay porn actor just died. Uh, the, yeah, the Billy, guy, Billy Harrison. Yeah, died the guy or from all those fucking um, what's it called? Uh, videos. Wait. All those the guy, Japanese. Yeah, yeah the guy. That yeah, guy c- died. C- c- wait, that guy. Wait, he, he wait, died. He what? died. In a, he died in a car crash yesterday, I think. Yeah, gotcha. No, oh, she's dead. it's true. No, I have no idea who you're no. talking about. That's... Billy Harrington, I think, is his name. I, I was saying I this to my friends. He died. Are you serious? One hundred percent. It's it's like he was like I don't know forty something, and he just died in a car crash. That's fucking. I feel legitimately saddened now. I can't believe he's yeah, dead. Billy Harrington. How could I Billy receive Harrington. the news on the fucking PC? Probably the. I love that guy. Probably yeah. the saddest uh, death of a gay porn star the world will ever experience. Um, well, besides when you died, Digi. Oh, right. <laughs> Anybody else got anything they think the human? Oh, hippo. What were you asking me about the tentacles before I got distracted by the? Uh, uh, porn? Uh, it was saying like, would they all come from the groin area, or would they be like all over your body? I like would a weird, gross. Like a forehead guy. dick. Oh yeah. man, I don't know. Like I would always assume that like I, I maybe just I watch too much Spider Man. The tentacles come from like your back, like a doctor yeah, octopus kind that's of. That's not. Thing. Okay. That's a good one. If it's coming, I mean, I would just prefer to be like a blob monster made of tentacles. You know, like or, mm-hmm. or like a tangela oh. type uh, creature. That can be a range. You know? <laughs> Digi, how much Homestuck fan porn have you seen? Not much. <laughs> have you? Have you? Are you aware of the tentabulge? <laughs> No, I am not what? aware of the tentacle. <laughs> oh no! Oh, is that the, that's the that's the Homestuck dicks, right? That's the troll dicks. Yeah, it, yeah. Im- imagine a, like a, like a, a vagina, as I'm sure you're doing constantly right now. <laughs> oh, but, God. but 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 the clitoris is a tentacle. Oh. I'll, and okay. it's all slimy, and 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 the and the, and the slime colors based off your, of Wait, your blood color. Do are, all are the trolls have those? not supposed to be tentacles that are like it's a foot a long? It's, there's, there's, there's no canon yeah. like troll dick, but uh, yeah. that's what the fan uh, fandom <laughs> they, is like, they, generally uh, the tentacle agreed that's like with. a foot long. Because they don't reproduce that way. It's just for it's just for pleasure. They're built yeah. for pleasure, not yeah. for speed. The the trolls. So. <laughs> oh, they're they're um, built for need. 
Hey, can I can I read a? Let me read a question. Wait, from the you gotta Twitter. answer the fucking. Anybody oh, else? Yeah. Come on. Have anything? We're missing about. Like we're missing about 150 extra pounds of lean body mass. We're just we're, out of the gate. We're, we're missing. Be we're, you, you just want us to be gorillas. That I, that, yeah, that body mass that has to come from great. somewhere, and it's gonna come from our brains, <laughs> yeah. and it's gonna come from our ability to last without constantly wait, wait. eating. Have you have you guys seen that picture of that uh, that like creature that was des- like it's a human being? This is what a human being would have to look like to survive a car crash. Have oh, you seen yeah. that? That's great. That's what, what? I, that's what we're missing. We're missing yeah. a lot of that stuff. That sounds <laughs> look it up right cool. now. If you haven't seen I, that, put it in the show notes. Look yeah, it please yeah. do. I, because great. I'm not I, looking up right now, but I want to see it later. I think what we're missing is a hand, uh, like, directly in the center of our back. Humans are so front-focused, it's fucking disgusting. There's no back representation in our body and our body mass. We need some sort of limb on our back so we can better defend ourselves from backstabs. As you all know, those are an instant kill, and it takes oh, 12 oh, seconds to uh, respawn. It'd be, it'd be like a leg, and you can kick people like yeah. a donkey. For anybody, By who, the way, anybody who might pictures, know this, this how, is him. how did we used to sleep? How did humans sleep before beds? Like you would, you'd you'd just gather around a fire and then take turns. I guess you get a bunch of you get a bunch of leaves and bracken and grubbly grubs, and you just huddle up. There's a reason you guys did you lay on your back? Like did you lay on your back on the ground or just like I don't know? I wasn't. You'd probably (laughs) curl up in the fetal position. Or whoever posted this, how what do the breasts add to surviving the car crash? How do those help surviving? Well, so you can nurse yourself back to health with supple milk. G- drinking, obviously. Oh my god, no, there's like the, a whole thing. There's like, yeah. What it? He's why a, is this? I thought this was someone, gonna be like a funny a human this being is art. would have oh to like god. be built like to survive a car crash. Is the idea? Yeah, but why it's, the it's weird? Kind of, why the this, weird nipple? It was originally developed like by a car crash like thing. I, like they 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 published that and it went viral on Facebook. And I think there has since been like further, you know. Is it like de- people have, is it like uh, deliberately disgusting to prove a point or something? Uh, I don't. I have we, no we idea. All, what we the almost made it a whole podcast without looking at images to piss off people. Well, uh, there's we show, so oh, show, show notes. show notes now. Th- thanks to the, me. Thanks to me, everyone. Praise me for that. Yeah. But just in concept, it's just this disgusting, like bulbous creature with like a lot of padding around the brain. Obviously, with these big ass, thick. He feet looks like and the juggernaut. Nips. But if he had, but if his yeah, under his helmet was just was shaped flesh. like his helmet. Yeah. Uh, basically. basically. <clears throat> all right, anybody else got answers for that question? Um, I have a couple answers, yeah. actually. I think, first okay. of all, a, 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 a tail of some sort to help with balance, because I'm mm, horribly clumsy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a... Uh, it's we're missing shirt. a lot of fur and cat ears. I want to be a Neko-chan. Uh, that's what we're missing. <laughs> I, I realized yeah. another... I'm missing the Neko-chan appeal, of course. <laughs> I realized a great uh, one, that but would, I want to hear Tom's second. Large and uh, did you, did you, would you not want to have real-life cat girls? I mean, come on. Oh, Absolutely. Then, then shut I, the fuck up. What's your um, I, 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 I think we're missing file conversion in, in, in our biological body. I was, it takes too long for me to convert files, and I need a, a body. I was literally to about that. to say that we need a USB port. Like, that's yeah, a good yeah, one. Dude. Charge yeah, my that's a good idea. Phone. Transhumanism. Watch that episode. Uh, no, another thing is uh, I, I was just recently found out that the uh, we only have like 10% of our, or 10 or 20% of our, our the cells in our eyes are good for like acute vision. The rest mm. are like really shitty. And, uh, and if all of the cells were, like, the stuff that we could use, like, acute vision with, our brain would have to be, like, three times its size to accommodate all the visual information. Interesting. So, bigger brain. Or if we could do, like, the fucking Andalites in, in Animorphs have, like, the yes. eye stalks that can yeah. go look behind you. So you Those can look in multiple directions at the same time. I, I was going to say, I, I was going to say, I wish we could see a greater range of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're so limited. It's pathetic. We are pretty we can't limited. Even sense, we can't even sense microwaves, let alone radio waves. Get the fuck out <laughs> of here. Do I want to I sense I microwaves wanna, I, all the fucking time? Like, I use the maybe. microwave. Do I want to sense it? It, it goes beep. <laughs> do I want to fucking that would, that feel my body like you just see them technology. you just they, you know they'd be like a different color and you'd be like oh neat i see there's Look, some microwaves all, ben, all i don't i don't want to ha- i don't want to see more of the spectrum because i don't want to see in other like qualities how bad my art is oh what, the limited you know, spectrum i see is bad <laughs> you enough. know what spectrum i'd love to be able to see is the autism the spectrum autism, and autism i can know before <laughs> i talk to yeah, somebody yeah, so so clever uh, it, 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 uh, it's, well, it's like imagine if we were all imagine if like those color codes that they had okay actually i already feel bad enough about myself i don't need another measure let me take a step back to explain we're missing the, the UI uh, to uh, to just our vision. Yeah. I- imagine it's fucking Vincent from the Vapors, and every time you walk up to someone, you can like you can like judge the <laughs> yeah. rank of autism. Exactly. Yeah. Well, remember at BronyCon they had these uh, for for the audience who wasn't there, uh, which is everyone, fucking I guess. Posing. They, yeah. They had yeah. these fucking badges where you could. Um, they had like a oh, three yeah. color system where it's like if you have green, that means 
you you can talk to me. If you have yellow, it means don't t- like or hesitate to talk to me, and red means don't talk to me at all. And it was like a, it was literally a system for like the uh, unbelievably large autism population of BrodyCon to um, yeah. you know communicate whether they wanted to be spoken to or not, um, or for you to communicate that to them. <sighs> um, not that they fucking work, because like. Of course not. But because you just got a um, glomp. Sometimes you just got a glomp, my dude. And exactly. I'm not gonna let some <laughs> bad shit my I think fucking way. We all way. just need to glomp every now and again. I to just get out of our system. Point, we build I, up our glomp receptors, and we just need to let them burst. Yeah. <laughs> point being, I'd love to be able I, to just see those colors on everybody before I. Point can be being, there. I'd love to glomp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we should have big puffy cheeks like this fish right here. <laughs> Because uh, it looks funny, and you could store, you could, you could inhale bigger, and you could exhale, I, and and uh, big oh, vapes. And if, you know, if oh, anybody yeah. who's DTF should have like a, a like a graphic over there, like a um, you know, the quest markers and RP MMOs, like the little mm-hmm, exclamation yes. point. Anybody who's like wants to fuck should have an exclamation point above their head. Oh, oh, wait, know? wait, 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 wait. That 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 that's like um, what if? When you know you want you want to go at it, you know your oh, skin yeah. changes like to be e- yeah. extremely red, and then people are like, oh, I know what yeah. you I'm, I'm sick of accidentally raping all these women who didn't actually want it. I'm well, just sick I, of it. I feel I'm as though a lot of people like the reason that they're afraid. Uh, this is definitely true for me. Like part of why I could never cold approach girls is like I don't know if they want to be spoken to. A lot of people here, see you have to do it to if find out to them at all. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to so, so everybody knows. Here's the right way to do it. assume they don't want to talk to you. Once you know yeah. that. Then you're armed. You know yeah. it's the worst possible <laughs> but, but, but scenario. But still do it anyway. Of course. Yeah, yeah. do it anyway. Yeah. That's right. That's I, right. I, uh, ben, you, you, you are the creator of science. You, you've made <laughs> physics. What, what would we have to do to the human body to make it be able to see more colors? Uh, I mean... We and more just, cones and rods? We, yeah, we just know. have to have like a greater... like. I don't know what would have to change in our cones and rods. They just have to be you know, set up to be sensitive just, to, a, to more you, frequencies. You just... Shove a little, a, a little uh, bumblebee in there, and then he'll work it out for you. Yeah, he, he, he you, you put bumblebees in your eyes, and they will see different colors, and then they will like type up on the little computer, like, okay, there's purple we, here. We, we might as like well get that, uh, thing that here. fucking shrimp, and then that gets sent to the brain. All right, let's just get what that shrimp. Part, what part of the eyeball do you think tastes? The All right, enough of this shit. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> I want the yeah, ass of the eyeball. That's probably the best. Part. <laughs> Here's a question I from that I am. Here's no. a question from Rugai. He says, "Have you ever pushed yourself to a point?" where you opened your inner strength. What? I feel uh, as though yeah. I've done that like almost every time I do anything physical because I never believe I can do as much as I can. Uh, I climbed oh, the um, tallest mountain in Virginia one time with my friends and nice. family. They were all like workout guys who were swollen, like ready. I showed yeah. up, you know, overweight in pajamas. like. But mm-hmm. I climbed the fucking mountain, so, you know, it took I, yeah, it's usually five a physical fucking hours. Thing, like... like there's, there's there's times in school t- years like uh, where we do like a a run round uh, several blocks for like ten minutes. Mm-hmm. It's like a long run, and when you get to the end or like near the end, you're like, I'm gonna die, but yep. you gotta sh- look cool, so you have to <laughs> sprint at the end, and you always kill yourself, but uh, in a strength. I like it. You you can't do it until you see the glory that yeah. is uh, sprinting over the end. Yeah. W- when I was like a when I was like a little kid. I used to wrestle, like, every single day of my life. With my friends, with my family, with my estranged relatives. I used to wrestle with fucking everyone. Hmm. And every time I was, like, pinned to the ground by, you know, a woman in her 40s or my best friend who was two years younger than me, I would always think, like, this is it. This is where I fucking die in this playtime of wrestle. But but then I would, like, channel my chi and I would, I would like, close my eyes and I would start breathing heavily. And I would overcome hate. I would, and I would he would remember hate. that he's a seven foot five juggernaut oh, and yeah, just yeah. destroy and, them and i would fucking that, obliterate them completely and i and i would like <laughs> scream as i as i like as i come up from my pen using all of my body force in the world and all of the g-force i've been i've been yes. saving up by running up against my wall i've been saving my g-force i can fucking release it all <laughs> in one punch and obliterate them even though we said to not punch each other it was just a wrestling match i would do it anyway just so I do it anyway yeah. what a champion the, 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 yeah. That reminds me of, of of a thing I used to do with my brothers, where like um we would get like all the soft things in the house, like all the cushions, all the pillows, uh, all the duvets, all the blankets, and then uh, one person, usually me, because I was the oldest, would get covered by all of the stuff, and we'd ha- I'd have to like rest, I like <laughs> s- scratch my way out, like punch oh, my yeah. way out, and they would lay on me, and oh, then no. I would I would 
I would be like, oh, I have no strength left. <laughs> oh, but and then but like right at the end, I burst forth and I'm like, I'm I'm alive now, and now it's your turn to be fucking suffocated until you're dead. Yeah. Dude, dude, and li- what? Literally, well, here, finish your thing. He's gonna say something. No, 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 I'm done. Okay. That's, that's basically L- Literally, what it was. My, my friend who used to wrestle with, fucking Rocky, I'm talking about him, Wii Sports fucking shitter. Uh, <laughs> I, like, like, literally, like, we were, like, the RPG, like, like I was, like, all attack and all, like, but I was, like, super slow. And then he was light on attack, but he was super fast. That was literally, that was literally it. And, and the way it would work is, like, once I got him in a pin and I sat on him, he, like, it would be over. Like, that would be, that would be TKO. That would be, like, the end of the game. So he had, like, w- find ways, like, to, like, like, get jabs at me without me being able to like grab him because if I grabbed him I could get into like an infinite combo and I would like instantly win the, <laughs> like the set so like he, he would have to fucking uh, evase through me but I always fucking got him because he's a fucking bitch fuck you Rocky uh, I, I found inner strength uh, while I was working on Mia Mafava I definitely physically that was an extremely demanding time and I just persevered and that, uh, there was no oh. one moment of just like you know, unlocking something, I, but just the, the physical fortitude required to get it done. I, despite you know, I working found time stuff. I found inner strength working on Brunswick. I worked on it like mm, most mm. of every day, all day. For like most yeah. days, I worked for most of the day for like an entire month. Yeah, and it was like yeah. the most focused I've ever been on finishing a thing. Mm. It, it's uh, similar to this. Uh, t- two for one, which are both related to one another. For the past couple of days before I came here to, I've been I've been Boston now. Hello. Uh, before I came here, I was I was working on finishing up the vaporette for Ben, mm-hmm. and I re- I realized two things. Like like most of the day was just me doing the vaporette, which was great, and it felt good to just like do work all day. Yeah. But I also just realized that like I can just stay up forever. Like I don't <laughs> get tired. Like I, I, I yeah. get. There's like a hmm. dip in between. Like I, I spent like in the last month in February, I had like eight or nine twenty-four hour days, and it like wasn't hard at all. Like there would be a dip where I would normally go to bed. Yeah, and that'd be kind of hard. But after I get over that, it's just like really fucking easy. Yeah, and and so I would, I would, I would, just, I like, would get like kind of tired forever, and it was great. I would you're get making... like kind of tired around ten p.m., and then I would be mm-hmm. fine again until maybe like. 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Yeah, exa- exactly, Ben, exactly. It would have to be, like, like, like well over 30 hours for me to, like, get, like, okay. If there's a crunch time, that makes sense, but you gotta sleep sometime, Munchie, so it doesn't seem like... You're really yeah, just making me miss, like, being young, because that's what I did when I was your <laughs> age, was just, like, not sleep as much as possible. <laughs> like, not even so much because it was, like, super easy to do, but just, like... To me, it was the coolest thing to do is, like, if you could stay up for 48 hours, that's the best possible, like, night. Because it just means that you did shit nonstop for two days without, like, any interruption. And especially for me as a kid, when I valued weekends so strongly, because, like, my cousin would come over and we watch anime all night. And it's like, if you pass out, you don't get to watch as much anime. You know, if you you pass out, you don't get to see every show that comes on Adult Swim. So you got to be up all night, you know. And, um... Yeah, so I got used to doing that, but it's it's a lot harder I think, now. I think Let's one of the best on slumber parties. I have a lot to say in slumber. Oh, parties. good idea. <laughs> one of, one of the best times that I pushed our, myself physically and Digi, you were there too. Is like the first Bernie Con we hung out. We didn't sleep for like three days straight. Uh, yeah, well, because mm. because we couldn't and because we didn't want to. Yeah. In, in that order. Yeah, that was a yeah that was definitely try. I, I'm, almost every con I've been to, I've pushed myself physically because it's just yeah. Up until recently, up until the last couple cons I went to, because of the fact that I decided, like, I, first of all, I'm an adult now, most of the shit at this con is not really exciting to me, I'm not gonna try to be anywhere in a timely fashion, I'm gonna make sure I get my fucking sleep in my shower, cause, mm-hmm. you know, when I was younger, it was like, no sleep, no shower ever, always by day three, I was like, my voice doesn't work anymore, and I look like shit, and I feel like shit, and I always wanna get the hell out of Baltimore, like, usually leave like, by noon on Sunday, because I'm like, I don't want to fucking be here anymore. But, um, you know, again, now that I'm older, it's harder to actually do that. And also, there's less incentive, because, like, I feel like every year, sleep means more to me, you know? <laughs> Understand. That's a terrifying development. I... We really, until we the really great need to get eternal sleep. I like, still hate human sleep. It's still my enemy. I would still never do it. Oh, I still hate it's the it. anime. Hey, but, if, you know. 
If you guys want to listen to us talk about sleep for a bunch of hours, you can go yeah, look at the sleep Procrastinator's episode. bonus episode, Insomnia. Yep, $5, yeah, Patreon. Oh, I thought you were you gonna, Plus, I thought you were going to recommend yeah, the sleep podcast. Which well, I think just yeah, but we want the money one, though, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the money uh, one. Also, uh, it's more recent. Fr- from... From fucking where Wait, where where? Oh fucking... oh, from Xenograde in the questions mm. bar. If you could completely get away with one crime, what would it be? Robbing a bank that has all the money in the world. <laughs> <laughs> where the hell? Did um, you that's um, um, the then if you buy anything, they'll catch um, you. Rape. Next question. No, if you uh, could state, completely get away. State with. enforced homosexuality. That would be uh, my. Well, that, that, well, that wouldn't be a cool. crime. Oh shit! You're right. <laughs> Never mind. I, yeah, if, if I could get away with one, I, I got master plan. If I could get away with one crime, I would illegally pass legislation to make all crime legal. Oh, there you <laughs> okay, go. okay, illegally. Yeah, uh, but again, that we're like dealing with like law here. Like, why not just do that legally? Why not legally pass a law to make all crime legal? Because um, they, would, they would say yeah, but that no. sounds my, hard. Okay, whatever. Say, my my crime that would yeah, that's be that's not hard. Was, <laughs> my crime would I would I would somehow make it that uh, I I have uh, like amnesty from everything, so then I can just do whatever I want. I can like f- cook the books. So so anything yeah. I do from that point forward, I can't. I, there's no legal ramifications I, for my actions. I, all you guys are playing fucking like wishing for three more wishes. With yeah, the we are. Yeah, I just gay. Gay. Okay. I, I, just I, I, well, here's my all answer. The money in the world, I've, that I've that's one. fine. I I will uh say my opinion on the internet. Oh, oh that's god, Hippo, that's I'm illicit. so fucking scared for that's you. That's too get, far. I'll get, fucking aw- I'll get away with it, though. That's, that's, I would, that's uh, the best deal of all time. I would take a giant robot and destroy a city with it. Why? Yeah, what okay. Because you, you get to Other fucking really destroy fucking a city funny. in a fucking robot. It'd be awesome. I used to have a fantasy. I used to think about this all the time when I was younger, hmm. that if I ever became, like, a billionaire, this was my plan, was I was going to hmm. own a private island... And I was gonna own like some kind of mech or giant like some some kind of destructive suit of s- something I could pilot, and sure. um, then just like have a city built on this island that I can destroy, and then I just keep rebuilding and destroying the city whenever I feel like it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that was bad. a fantasy of mine as a kid. You just gotta play Ratchet and Clank too. Yeah. Did this tie into the fact that you were a god? Um, no, I was even probably younger than that when I had this fantasy. Okay. Um, before you're a go- god, yeah, days, before I became you were a whole, malevolent billionaire. One, one before I was a whole another. god, back when I was only a half god. All right, yeah. uh, here's another question from okay. One Spar. He says, "Hey guys, it's One Spar, the one man who's sparringly on time for questions. What are your go-to <laughs> okay, excuses nice. for being late?" Ah. Ben, you have the floor. I, um, <laughs> I just didn't care enough to show up on time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It works every time. The, 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 uh, the, they burst into applause when he trots that one out. Yeah, I'm owning it. I'm owning it. I'm yep. making it my, look my, good. My, my, my go-to excuse will be find something that I was actually doing but warping it in a way to make it sound like you're an asshole for making me feel bad about it. And that sure, I'm, right. I'm a saint for doing That's it. Good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, that's pretty much what it comes down to. Like, I find something that was outside my control, and I project the excuse onto that. Like, I'm sorry, dude, there was just so much traffic. Like, what could I do? Yeah. What could I, I just, my, I do that. I do my that. My friend Matt really got this down to a science. Pat? There, Matt, my friend Matt. Matt he, Pat, uh, Pat? Gotcha. Matt, Matt Pat, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we had, he's a whole game theory about it. No, um, <laughs> he, uh, what, he, he'd constantly uh, be late for work, and so his, his way around it was that if he realized he was going to be late for work, he'd be like, I'm just going to be later for work. And he would go mm. get donuts for everybody. And then he'd bring them uh, in. And yeah. be like, why are you late? He's like, I got everybody donuts. Yeah. And everybody was happy. And he Not... never got in trouble. That's a reasonable idea. Yep. Yeah. The, the, there should be a podcast with Tom, with talking Tom and Matt. Pat, the, can you imagine just the disparity there? The, oh, no. The richest man in the world and the poorest <laughs> man in the world. <laughs> there's, there's, there's some knowledge that can be gleaned from that. Yeah. That would be good. I would love that. That would be, that would be literally the most opposites attracting in the entire the most happy world. positive man who's ever lived. Who you know, it's just a theory, but he claims it's true. And then yeah. versus Tom, that would be that would be something. Make it happen, guys. Patreon.com slash me. <laughs> and we will get Patreon.com slash Tom versus Matt Pat twenty eighteen extravaganza. We should get Matt Pat on the on the PC. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. I mean, yeah, uh, it next is episode. a good idea. Does anyone else find Matt Pat kind of like kind of adorable? 
No. I was like, like, Yo, what's up, guys? Sorry I've made a very long time. It's the Tom Bomb he, here. Time for another <laughs> game excuse. I don't know. He's so, like... Game excuse? Like, he's kind of, like, overly <laughs> sincere, but it's kind of in a way yeah. that, like, he doesn't see any... I don't know. He, I think he's he's just, like... He's like I think Billy he's very scene. authentic. Yeah, he's really authentic, and he's, like, he's... I don't know. It's, he like, just he, he's to so be authentic that I feel... Engine optimization sometimes I'm kind of embarrassed for him, but, but then I'm like... Oh, but but you know he he's he's in, he's having fun with it. I I I just get I, I stop at the embarrassing. I thing. love game of theories on Five Nights. Or um, yeah, I so actually I'm really like them. I do. They they they're so much better than yeah. the game. It's it, it's the presentation I object. I just yeah. I, like it's it's just not for. It's a taste issue. It's a taste issue, and I do I not just can't care for sit it. through how much fucking how repetitive his videos are. That's yeah. what I can't handle. Sure. Like they could each be half the, the same thing over and over. We're again. fucking. No, you guys, we're fucking everything up. We can't say all this shit because we need to get him on the show. Okay. Yeah. Just stop. I He's apologize, gonna... Matt right. Pat. Well, I meant none I, of it. I, I, I remember Matt Pat responsible for one of the greatest childhood tragedies that's ever occurred in my entire life. What was that? Uh, I, I was using the family computer. Here, like like in just like like the living room yeah and uh like like and and like the way my house was positioned like if my mom were to come out of her bedroom and like look in the living room she could instantly see it was on my screen oh, no. and one day in like in in like the the dead of night aka 10 p.m she waddled <laughs> out from from her bedroom and saw me looking at matt pat uh like like the boobs episode of game theory where he no his video game characters boobs no and she, and, 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 and she flew off the handle oh Perfect. oh geez how old are you at this point Holy one shit. year old like, yeah, it was like 11 or I something. I knew there was going to be boobs involved, because that dude puts boobs in, like, all his shit. He's a boob. What is he He's definitely a boob ma- booby man. Uh, hey, booby would man. you like to enter a lightning round of Radcon 3 hype questions before we wrap up the podcast? I think that's only fair, because the next episode, the 100th episode, will be in Radcon, so I think that's right. it's time. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so here's, the, here's so. all the questions we got about Radcon. Um, we got AJ Shoop, who asks, who's going to smell the worst at the end of Radcon 3? Digi. No. Digi. Or, Digi. Digi or me? Wait. No, I think Whoa. it might be me. Hold the fuck. It might be me. Munch. <laughs> I think it might be me. Do you? Okay. When Ben Saint moved out of my house. Oh, it's Ben. I forgot. The room yeah. had to be pressure washed for days before it stopped smelling like his body odor. Jeez. My dad Louise. literally pressure washed the room twice. Like all the walls, all the I carpets. I smell great. What are you talking about? Everything had to be cleaned ben. multiple times Enough. before it's less lost the scent of Ben Saint. Uh, well, there you go. So, well, I mean, it's Ben, are, but it's, it's probably all the answer is Ben. The but Ben will smell no worse at the beginning of Radcon than the end. <laughs> <laughs> also, we will all smell fucking terrible, except for Nate, who will probably like it, it, wake it, up at five in the morning. Nate will be shower. fastidious. We're in a fucking mansion. We have yeah. showers. Wait, there's you, no. Uh, is it a mansion? We're good, We're good man. Well, okay, it's, it, it's a big it's house. A big it's a big house. house. It, 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 if, 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 you, if you want to understand what Radcon 3 will be like, just take the late, great Billy Harrison's uh, fucking yeah. locker room Harrington. scene. Harrington. Ha- or Harrington. Uh, fucking the locker room scene, but instead of there being lockers, we are locked inside. And and, and the smell permeates the entire <laughs> building. That's what it's like. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's an answer that Munchie can just say my name immediately and be correct about. Um, Mr. Tangelo asks, who will get the drunkest at Radcon 3? Digi. 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 I don't yeah, think anybody Digi. else really seriously drinks out of this group. Yeah, I don't think so. No. no. I mean, not, not as much as not as drunk on life, because that would be me, no, The, the and question gentlemen. is, though, in the in the environment of Radcon, who could be motivated to drink more? Perhaps think, it would be Gil. I, I was going to say Hippo's the only person who I could see out drinking. Oh, my God. Me. We should play it, But it would only be once. It wouldn't be that he drank more overall. It would be that he yeah, might at true. one point get drunker. Guys, do you, do you, do you want to uh, play Staves? Tom, that? Tom could get What's that drunk that? too. That's when you. That's when you. That's when you. You duct tape your beer cans to each other, and like the more you drink, the longer your wizard staff gets, and whoever has the longest wizard staff wins the night. <laughs> what? Oh, the that's fuck? good. That it, yes. Uh, oh, actually, no. Because uh, I don't want to die. I I will agree before I know what that is. I just told you what it is. Oh, <laughs> you just told oh, us. Oh, oh, oh! I, I don't I get it. I understand it. You just like you drink a beer, and then you you drink your new beer, and you duct tape it to the top of the old beer can. Oh, those things. Oh, I thought I thought you were talking about duct taping it to the other person and having to drink it <laughs> no. off of them. Can I do that with orange juice? I want to play, I want to play the grown-up I, you know, I definitely <laughs> want to. I definitely want to play that beer stacking thing. I've never done that before, but I want to. Yes. Another great... Here's Let's one I do have it. done, though, which is where you... Uh, you get two big cans of beers and you duct tape them to your hands and you're not allowed to 
you know, remove them until you finish. So okay. you just got okay. beers, duct tape your we hands. We can combine hands the totally useless. We did this with a game of uh, – we combined this with a game of uh, 20 questions once, where it's like every time you got a question wrong, you had to take a drink. So we just sure. – like because we wanted to be able to use our hands, we just stood there, me and the guy I was doing this with, just like facing each other and 20 questions each other until one of us <laughs> finished our beers enough to get our fucking hands free. But yeah, it's a fun game. Um, nice. I I don't I don't mind the idea of like a big drunk party time. Uh because I will not drink unless pressure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean I, I I will have a beer, but I won't you know, go like oh I'm gonna get might, fucking drunk uh, unless that's the In point. my life I have drunk the beers and the alcohols up to this point. But recently I like never drink just because like it's not around, so like I don't and it's just a waste of time for it, me to it, go to the store. It's the biggest and get waste it. of time. You, okay, here's a yeah. here's a really fucking, here's a really well, so important that, so question. the other day the other day I went no. out and I had we, we were at dinner and I got like a it was like a mango teeny and I drank it, and I felt wasted after one you, martini. It was, uh, it hit me. You, you, one guys, you guys are fucking baby going for beer. I'm gonna go for alcohol in its purest form and eat pure pieces of wheat. <laughs> you guys, pure I, I, I have, I'm not the middleman. I have here. a very like important question. If okay. I were to bring weed to Radcon, would anyone smoke with me? I would not. No. no. Nobody would do it? It's <laughs> because okay, I have for... smoked weed uh, on a number of occasions, and I have never well, enjoyed the sensation. Well, that's unfortunate. I have never smoked a weed, so I might try one. All right. One weed? Uh, All right. I might, try, I might try it once, but I, I hate the smell. I know I hate the smell. Like, uh, I, like smell I mean, I don't weed. care if you bring it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm saying, I mean, it's Munchy totally, does. <laughs> for, for the record, it is totally decriminalized in Massachusetts, yeah, so exactly. this would not be, like, an illegal it's all good. Uh, thing, um, but I would have to, you know, drive it and everything. Give me that kush. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I can... don't be high the whole time, yeah, boy. you know. No. Well, don't be high, guys. All right, yeah. yo, okay, let's talk more about this n- little shit later. All right, well, one more. We got anything one, else? One final uh, last Radcon-related question yeah. we got from Agent MM. He said, to those in a relationship, what does your significant other think of PCP or Radcon, and would they join in? Uh, I'll answer first. My <laughs> my girl, my fiancé is a huge fan of the PCP. I'm um, mm-hmm. excited about Radcon, like, like to see what's going to come out of it. She has no interest in being a part of the PCP whatsoever, because uh, that's good. The chemistry of this group is like very. I mean, first of all, anyone new joining the PCP is a terrible fucking idea. No one should ever join this group again. And it Let's just... say the standards have elevated uh, astronomically. Yeah, well, it's just that. The point of this is that it's a, a long-standing group of friends. We've known each other for years. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could see if, say, we all move to Boston and we all fucking have our girlfriends with us and everybody becomes best pals. I could see them Mm -hmm. getting involved in some way in the future um, if we're doing, like... (laughs) (laughs) Munchie, if you're doing... Munchie, do you not want to have anyone around to do set designs, to turn on your cameras, to switch your batteries, to manage your data, to do all the things that I pay a secretary who happens to fucking be my fiancé to do, you know? But what happens if you break up, you know? I mean... you gotta hire a new fire. guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but the, the, you, when you put your relationship in the middle of your business, yeah. you're asking for trouble. Yeah, I have no interest. Little... I have no I interest I think that whatsoever. you're going to run into the D- same D- trouble I, I regardless. I actually don't have a hard opinion on this. And I think if you want to use them like, as like a cameraman, I think that's perfectly fine. If, oh, yeah. like, like as a you cameraman, should. I mean, that's what you, like a if part you, of the con. If you just want to have them be like a tech guy. You fucking no need those that. people around. Like that's why – it's like with Red Letter Media, if you actually see a picture of the whole group – there are other people in Red Letter Media who never show up on camera. Like, if you I'll, look at a picture yeah, of sure, all of them, sure. there's people who just run the cameras and stuff. I believe there's there is a woman in Red Letter Media. She's never in any of the. The one videos. who's been around in a couple episodes I, back in the day. I, maybe it might be her. Yeah, I don't know. Um, because there was that girl who was in the documentary. I don't know if she's like considered a part of the group. Um, or right. She was just right. tangentially related, but I'm pretty sure there's someone. There's at least one member of like the group who I don't think ever shows up in videos. Well, and... hey, hey, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, I have legitimate nightmares about girlfriends getting involved in the PCP. <laughs> legitimate nightmares. Like, like uh, they actually have them at night, like in yeah, in like bed. like it's the worst case scenario. Life has gone to hell because girlfriends have been involved in <laughs> PCP work. It is the worst case scenario to me. And well, uh, let's just say I'm not I'm not interested. That's, that's what how worth, I feel about if, it. Uh, if 
if uh, if May was ever involved if for any reason in the future, it would not be a mm-hmm. girlfriend involved because we're already uh, engaged. So same. Yeah, difference. I'm with Munchie on this. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the fact that this even comes up is a terrible thing for me. This is the wrong questions to be asking. This is the last uh, question the way, that anybody had, and I want to know what everyone's girlfriend thinks of the fucking PCP and Radcon, my, uh, and if they okay, would fine. be involved. Fine. If you think so. Well, anyway. I, Vriska, Vriska thinks you're all <laughs> fucking gay. My, I, don't, I don't know. My girlfriend uh, loves the PCP, is a fan, is a fan of like everybody in it, patrons most of us, uh, and... I mean, she has said that she has no interest in PCP, though, to be fair, that was, uh, you know, after knowing how I felt about it. So perhaps her opinion was colored. But I I really I mean, she has made no bones bad that she is not like she doesn't want to be involved because, like, it's my thing. It's not her thing. She has no relationship. I think that generally our our, uh, Mm. spouses of whatever kind, like, recognize that it's. This this group has already like anything that tampers with it is already a problem. Like everything yeah. we've tried to do has already been a problem. So let's not make it any worse. You know, Michelle like, was just telling me the other day. Michelle was just telling me about uh, like the Super Best Friends cast um, or the Super Best Friends. You know, whatever. Like apparently people were coming to them and asking them questions. Like, hey, why don't you like we see your girlfriends occasionally? Why don't you get them involved in more? And the guys were like, well, I mean, they're not in the show. And then, like, the girls themselves weighed in. And this is coming from Michelle, so it's a, you know, third-party thing I'm hearing it. But the, they said themselves, like, I mean, that's their thing. Like, they're just – there they are. They're, they are right. doing their thing over there. It has nothing to do with us. Why there's, would we be involved? Right. There's no reason that's to – That's I feel. Like, if we want to do something with them, we can do another project, you know? Like, if, if, yeah. if there is going to be yeah. a gigantic, like, hey, it's all the PCPs and their dates and they're doing a fun whatever, like, that's – fine but like they, they don't they don't need to be a yeah. part of the pcp you know <laughs> I, I feel like i Munchie, feel like why are you groaning like... you did this you organized this the double date plus two what the hell are you groaning about I, well that I, was just a th- th- that was just th- a friendship th- initiative except it right? was that, all that... over twitter it was super publicized it was did, used yeah. as a pcp did, did, that, group that activity that groan was not in relation there to you hashtags. that groan was in relation to me moving my stomach around <laughs> okay well, okay whatever. okay <laughs> sure uh, I, I, I'm not coming down hard on the anti-girlfriend side, did you? I think it's a funny joke to say, ha yeah. I think it's fair for me to say I am staunchly on the anti-girlfriend side. <laughs> very, very much so. In terms of them getting uh, involved in the PCP, I would agree. I'm not, I'm not a okay, fan of you anyone go. new being involved in the yeah, PCP. But you know what? This is kind of an interesting question. I've thought about this more as time's gone on. I think something like what Digi did with corrupting your kids. Like, what he did was he's just making new content – for, for people who choose to be involved with it. Calling that way, you're not putting any better. pressure on, like, old people to just, yeah. like, get with the times into your, exactly. into your, yeah, the college you know, your fund change was first, shit. And it was the same thing. Yeah. Well, they, okay, there, there you go. I just, I, yeah, you know, college fund was definitely part of what inspired much. it. But, because it was just... Well, there you go. And it was pretty immediate. It was like Ben moved in, and they immediately had mm-hmm. a new channel that had totally different content. We had been like, making oh. we had been making yeah. it, like, before I moved in. It just didn't get done until after I moved in. I mean, it's it's always important to keep in mind. Like, if you're an internet content creator, you only have so much time to work on stuff. So, like, if your workflow... Yeah. If you start devoting, like, all your time yeah. to this side project, obviously that's something yeah, to, like, watch out for. But it for. depends on but, if... It, like, at the same time, though, I think yeah. there's a lot of potential... In like, for instance, corrupting your kids for that to end up being a flagship channel. Well, that's perfectly know? fine. But, and that's but you got to. But uh, yeah, you have to recognize that at the moment, you know, that's not bringing home the right, bacon exactly. like a main channel Digibro video. That, that's all. That's all. Yeah. Be practical. That's all I'm saying. Um, yeah. Uh, Interesting anybody... question. I've certainly thought about that quite a bit. You know, as I have a GF now and whatnot. It's hard not to, especially when you're living with your fucking significant other and they're like witnessing all. They're sitting. Yeah, on the they're ground, all up in it. They're uh, all up in it. Yeah. Like listening to the PCP right now while you're performing it, and are yeah. every time yeah. you record. So sometimes it's weird, but other times it's fine. Uh, and, and incidentally, uh, like just the other day, the the new Weagua I put out had like a thing filmed uh, by Michelle, who was just around as I yeah, filmed the, my little the Hillary, Hillary section. Skit. I had and, like, a music video was that was filmed by May yesterday. The uh, fucking well, there you go, there you go. It was um, great. Uh, was it that? Uh, uh, well, okay, it wasn't. But I'm just making a joke. A uh, weed hit the spot. What are you rocking on my thing? But the weed hit the spot. What are you rocking? <laughs> no, on my it's thang, very baby. important. Everyone knows that it's not me and May. Dude, that we, video. the first thing we thought was like, wow, did you? Wow, he really did it. He yeah. really did it this time. Anybody who doesn't know, there's literally <laughs> porn um, in my YouTube in, in my uh, music video for this song, which didn't look nearly as apparent when I was editing it. 
Like, okay. because my okay. monitor is so dark, I thought that this was, uh, like, really obscured. And, like, uh, May couldn't even see it. She was like, test. oh, I don't see anything. It, yeah, no, when you look at it on a phone, it's, like, way fucking obvious that it's porn. And I was just like, By the like, way, Digi, well, I on the subject porn of- on YouTube now. Hopefully yep. I don't get my channel deleted. <laughs> on the subject of that song, me and Michelle roasted it endlessly for quite a while. But it, but once we just, it, it really got into our heads. And now we just say to each other, we hit the spot when you rock another Dude, thing, Dude, that song baby, is so intended to be, here's how you need to listen to it. If you're in the grocery store and you realize (laughs) that you are picking up hot dogs but you didn't get buns and you need to go back to get (laughs) buns and you're going to haul ass across the whole grocery store, (laughs) we didn't spot when you're fucking on my thing, baby. We didn't spot when you're fucking on my thing, baby. We didn't spot when you're fucking on my thing, baby. I want to time my gigantic strides as I leap across the the, the fucking grocery store. uh, It's replaced Sabotage by Beastie Boys as my run across the grocery store (laughs) mental song. Because I used to make a playlist for that. I should make a fucking play. I get most of my cardio done at the grocery store because I forgot hot dog buns and I've yeah. only got hot dogs and I have to go back for more. My, my diet consists of only hot dogs, no buns, because I keep forgetting them. <laughs> and I can do, I don't have enough music to make it across the store. It takes me exactly. like four minutes and the strong's only two minutes we long. We need this playlist. Guys, what are you, what's your hot dog bun song? Let's go around the circle. What's your hot dog bun song? Uh, Detachable Penis by whoever made that song. Detachable penis. I know what you're talking uh, about. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, uh, guys, let's just give a meme shout out to our boys on the, on the Twitter just to, to, to placate our them boys temporarily. In blue. Uh, okay, here we go. At DJ Felis asks, How do I get a GF? What's your meme answer for this question? <laughs> become famous. Just become yeah, famous. Become, there yeah. you go. Uh, become rich and famous and handsome. Yeah. Rich and or famous. Become famous and get a fucking Snapchat. I, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, Snapchat is that famous. advice is terrible. Um, no. just talk to girls. <laughs> ben, what the fuck? I've heard, oh, wait, is this a meme? I've heard... Oh, shit. Uh, you said you said meme yeah. answer. Oh, I ruined it. I did. I'm cutting this out. <laughs> yeah. Now all these uh, guys are going to actually get I GF's guy. No, no, it. no. Oh, God. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Us. Um, rape. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, Ben. You solved it. Great save. Oh, That's a good yes. meme. Okay. Uh, I would yeah. say uh, log on to RuneScape. <laughs> 2007 edition. Just, and just, and just farm for gold until you um, have enough to buy it. The, 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 the best places uh, Grand Exchange in Varric. Uh, uh-huh. Sometimes Faldor, but you know. Oh, don't don't go to Longbridge, though. That, that's where all the, th- the them. The, what do you call it? What do you yeah. call it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 we call it the, the uh, real escape thoughts. Let they hang out in, in Longbridge. <laughs> what do you call them? Thoughts. thoughts. Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Uh, good. Uh, Thank you, everyone. I think it's time we shut it down. I think we. It's, it's time, time to, to power off this utilitarianism machine we've got here. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank God we've made so much progress for humanity here today. Uh, really going to be useful. We've really made a difference. Whining about thing, uh, whining about topics we don't really understand on this yeah. podcast that no one watches. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, that weed has really hit the spot <laughs> at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. All right, we're done. All right, thank you, everyone, for listening. Hey, uh, patreon.com slash the procrastinators. Bonus episodes, insomnia episodes out. There's there's a total of 12 bonus episodes. Just pledge $5, you get them all. $1, you get into our patron chat. It's a fun time. We're hanging out other all the time. Uh, we got some merch. Click the links in the fucking description. Everything's up on Google Play and iTunes for the podcast. Tom here is handling that. And that's everything. And, and Radcon 3 magical episode next Radcon 3. fucking week. Look out for fucking rad content. It's going to be on everybody's channels. You're going to want to look for the Radcon 3 playlist, which I think already exists and has one video like the um, the thing. Like, I would watch that playlist. That's where everything's going to be. If you could subscribe to a playlist, you should, but you can't. So watch everybody's channel. Radcon 3 coming in a week. It's good. Like, the content's going to roll out over time, but there will definitely be some during the con. So let's, keep, let's prepare ourselves for that journey. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. <gasps> Bye. 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 Bye.